get those goosebumps every time Yeah, when you're not around You throw that to the side, yeah. I get those goosebumps every time Yeah, 713 yeah. Couldn't yeah. quit when you're riding yeah. Why they on me? Why they on me? I'm flying I'm sipping low key I'm sipping low key and high yeah. I get those goosebumps every time Get in, get in! What a win! What yeah. a victory for the very best! Yes. Who? Unreal. Boys, unreal. How are you? Oh, absolutely buzzing! Uh, what a day! What a day it's been! What a great day! Um, yeah, mate, I'm, I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. Uh, that was sensational. Um, watching that today, but I'm sure we'll get into it. But me, I'm good. Um, uh, football training with the, with the boy this morning, uh, got roped into coaching the session as you do. Uh, now it looks like I'll be coaching every week, but um, yeah, rush back thinking oh, I'm gonna miss kickoff, gonna miss kickoff because I remember saying to you boys. Um, got there just in time, and uh, I'm glad I so didn't miss the team news. <laughs> yeah, the team news. But yeah, I'm glad I didn't miss a second of that. But um, Mr. Hall, how are you doing today? Did you, did oh, you win? No. Sorry? Grand National, any winners? Uh, got a place, that was it, Galvin. That was it. Didn't get the winner. Didn't get the winner. I, and do you know what? It was quite annoying actually, because because uh, the winner the winner reminded me of our old number ten, but uh, I didn't do it because it was the favourite, so didn't do it. But uh, but yeah, got a few quid back, which was good. But I'd, honestly, boys, it, I was actually at the point when I was watching it, and I was just like, I was still just on cloud nine after that game. Um, the game just put me in a fantastic mood. It was there. Uh, do you know what though? Without we, and I don't want any of this to be negative. But did any of you after the game just think? Imagine if we had a full fit squad this whole season. I was just like, we yeah. we, we would not be where we were where we are now. We just wouldn't. We just wouldn't. Oh, yeah. it, that that brought back last season for me. That 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 yeah. that result, that performance brought back last season. But you know what? As you're right, you're right, Pete. Let's not go there. Uh, fantastic performance. Uh, absolutely delighted with the three points. Uh, I've got the Bragham Knights uh, in Merseyside at the moment. Obviously, Liverpool and Everton haven't played yet. Um, but, you know, I was giving it large about Alexander Izak, as I have been doing for the last two or three weeks, and he just went and proved me right today. Absolutely outstanding. But, yeah, on a personal level, I'm all good. Uh, been really looking forward to doing this show, uh, talking all things Newcastle. Um, but, Dazzler, how are you, mate? You good? I'm, I'm over the moon as well. Uh, yeah, I, I was straight after the game. I wasn't thinking about, about uh, what, what we, we we missed out on this this year, but I'm looking forward to next season. But no, straight after the game, headed to that It was at the evening birthday party dinner. Uh, so uh, then straight back down here for, for this, back home again, because I was looking forward to uh, having everything set up, ready to go home and rock in the door. So not long in the door and getting into this. Boys, let's get into the show. Welcome to the chatters as well. Just a reminder to smash that like button if you want to get in the chat. If you're new, hit the subscribe button. Plenty more to come from Loaded. Um, so let us get into this. And there's a lot to talk about. Uh, and I'm feeling going to go to you straight away because you're, you're after sending me a message. So let's go to you. Your message, your message you have in the private chat. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> what? What did I say? <laughs> I'm just buzzing. Cheers, Navi. Oh, nice one, Navi. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. 499 uh, donation super chat. Uh, next three games are very winnable. Um, Spurs, just next three are tough. Uh, yeah, they are. Jesus Christ, I didn't realize till today. Um, if we win the next three, we're in a good place to push for fifth outside chance of fifth getting Champions League. No, I, I didn't want to go there tonight. I didn't want to go there because I looked at that league table and like Nobby, I was looking at the fixtures and I was thinking, is it a stupid thing to say? And I was like, nah, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to say it. But now Nobby said it, you've got to discuss it. Can Let's we come, back oh, that. come Nobby, we're going to come back to it. Let, let's get yeah, 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 yeah. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that is the first discussion topic yeah <laughs> definitely definitely it's yeah great thank you yeah. Robbie. But Sorry, cheers, Nabi, and we will. That's the first question we'll take, right? But yeah. I'm gonna, I, I am gonna go to you, Pete, first because you were a busy boy. Uh, tell, tell us about this, Pete. Ah, yes. So pleasure. Um, this week to, um, do a preview for Premier League TV. Um, it was aired everywhere apart from the UK. Um, so some of our, um, some of our fans from abroad, some of our followers, some of our subscribers. Um, may well pick it up at some point. But yeah, brilliant to have um, or, or to chat to um, Carl Walker and not the Carl Walker of Man City, <laughs> Carl Walker of, uh, who's regularly on Sky Sports. Um, and yeah, we just previewed the, um, the the Newcastle Tottenham game and just asked me my opinions on, on the season, um, on how things were going with Newcastle, where I expected them to finish, who were kind of the standout players, just general feelings um, around the club at the moment, just obviously from a fan's perspective. Um, and it was great. Great to uh, obviously be at St. James's. Great to uh, have a chat um, with, with with the lads and, um, yeah, to be to be in and, in and around everything. But um, and not not only that, um, whilst I was there, I wasn't the only one recording. Um, there was uh, two fantastic fans, uh, Ryan and David, who have been right in the middle of um, sort of the public eye this week in the build-up to... The game, obviously, with everything around our sponsor, Seller, um, uh, and uh, the RNID um, sponsoring or being on the front sponsor. Um, these boys were in the in the video captioned by the club earlier on this week, and uh, they were being interviewed themselves. And it was great to meet both Ryan and David. Really, really nice, nice people, and their and their parents, their mums were there as well, which was great. Um, great to speak to Amanda. Um, uh, it was just a, a brilliant time. And actually, what was really great about that was Kyle, uh, who was presenting, actually wore the new Cash United top with the new technology on. Uh -huh. And it was connected up. And um, it was great to see how it all worked because the, the, the guy who obviously created the technology was there in the background. He wasn't on TV, yeah. but he was working it um, off, his, off his phone and making sure it was all connected. And um, you could tell when it started to work because Carl just literally just shot up because <laughs> it, it, it's great. So uh, everything, basically they've got connectors, they've got a connector on, on the Newcastle badge yeah. and that, that goes off when you score. So like it literally anyway. right on the heart. So that, that goes oh, off when you score. Um, it kind of goes all the way down, kind of like your, your front. So it goes down in like in, in blocks of two and then the, it's the same on the back. So like if there's a negative reaction, like or a negative thing like the opposition score or or um we're booing the ref or we're booing the, the opposition player that motion goes on the on your back that, oh, that okay, okay. Your back. and then when things happen for you you score something happens the the crowd are kind of chanting that all comes off the front so uh oh, nice. yeah it was it was great to 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 know that the people that those that were wearing it today managed to get like a real good yeah. sample of it working with the goals. Yeah. And the I'd, I'd say, Pete, they're, they're still absolutely buzzing. Uh, and I, I mean that literally as well. But uh, no, and it was great to see Dan Byrne uh, do the sign language uh, gesture as well uh, back. So it was just, it was just a, a lovely, lovely touch. Uh, it was, yeah, great. And uh, fair play uh, on, on getting that done as well yourself. Um, yeah. But yeah, let's get into this game uh, and let's get into the team news because the team news had a few people scratching their heads at the very start. Thank goodness. Mm. Uh, but uh, trying to make out what formation is Eddie going to go with. Uh, but yeah, he, that Otino and Hall were, were back and on the bench. Barnes and Anderson started. And it was the, all the all important question as well. Can Bruno get through this last game without picking up a yellow card? But what did you make of the, the team news? And Chris, I'll go to you first in the team news. Yeah, so I think it was. Uh, I think uh, at the time Pete, Pete was at training, wasn't he, with his lads? Um, and me and you, Daz, were having a bit of a gab about this because it was funny. It came, so the lineup came out and it confused me this week. And boys, tell me if I'm wrong, but normally the 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 players are in their position order, but this yeah. this time they were in number order. So I, I looked at it and I was like, right, because uh, straight away I always look to the bottom. I always want to see Alexander Isak. That always puts my mind at this. So anyway, I looked at the bottom and I was like, right, where's Isak? Oh my god, where's Isak? Then I saw Isak. I was like, right, okay, okay, panic over. Then when I was when I was counting the players, I was like, hang on a minute. 
And I had to get, I genuinely had to get a piece of paper out and go, right, what is this formation? What because I couldn't I couldn't work it out. Because at first I seen Dan Byrne and thought, right, oh, Dan Byrne must be playing left back. And then I thought, hang on, who's playing centre back with Dan Byrne? Then is it Kraft? And then I thought, oh, hang on, is Murphy right wing or is um <laughs> is is Barnes right wing or is Gordon right wing? I couldn't couldn't work it out. And then once I put it all down on paper. I think I messaged you, didn't I, Daz? And I was like, we must be playing 5-2-3. We've got to be with the wing-backs. Yeah. And then I was, I filled all the positions in. And then I was like, right, Elliot Anderson must be playing left wing-back. Um, because I just I just couldn't fathom it at all. But, um, yeah, it, the, the lineup was surprising. But I must admit, I was pretty excited because I thought we we've got a we've got a plan here. We've got a plan, and we're gonna we're gonna I, we're gonna hopefully execute it. And we most certainly did, didn't we? So yeah, the the lineup was um, was a bit of a baffler. Um, but do you think, boys, just before obviously you know you get into your thoughts on the lineup, do you think that the the the, the players being numbered in number order rather than player order, do you think that was like a little tactic from the from the team or something? Because as I say, that I've not seen that before. Normally, they're all in order of what position they're playing. So, just wanted to know your thoughts uh, on that. I'd say it's the the person who normally puts them together. I was in holidays, and the and alternative <laughs> person who put them together, Chris. And yeah, uh, when you th- when you think that Isaac is playing centre back, yeah, you do start to to, to panic a bit. Uh, but uh, no, I just um, did, I just uh, wondered whether he didn't want to give anything away, Daz, because it, it just it, it just baffled me because it isn't normally showing like that. And I thought, you know, I think it was you as well, Daz, who said when as he was asked in the press about it, he, gave, he didn't give it away. away. Yeah, <laughs> just made me wonder. He, he wanted to keep everyone guessing right. That's for, that's for sure. Pete, Pete, your thoughts on on the who did start first? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> it was great to see Barnes starting, um, and more importantly, it was great to see Barnes, Gordon, and Isaac starting. Um, I think the the commentators mentioned it was the first time this season that those three have started in the same team, uh, which uh, is it's a crazy thought. I'm not going to lie um, that those three it's taken until what middle of May, uh, sorry, April, for, for them to be starting a game together. But great to see them in the team. Um, the team in itself, Anderson in there, was great to see. Obviously, we knew Will it wasn't going to be available. Um, the rest of the team was kind of as you'd expected. But uh, for me, my attention kind of turned to the bench because obviously we had the news that Tino Livramento and um, Lewis Hall were both they, they both arrived at the stadium and that and that gave me a lift certainly Livramento um uh, because obviously he's, he's been such a an important player for us over the course of the season so having him back was big so it just kind of made me think uh, okay we've got at least a couple of options off the bench that we can go to because that was the bit that was worried about is that what do we have as options um but arguably we, we, we didn't need that yeah, no, I thought it might be the might be the day for for uh, Alex Murphy, but no, no, uh, no, uh, it did not was not to be this time. Uh, this is the, the Spurs lineup uh, as well, uh, who they lined out with, um, and as uh, Tobe said as well, Werner playing on, on the wing. He didn't want to play on the wing, but, uh, but uh, he was. Uh, thank God for that as well. He had a, he had a mirror, uh, but. Um, this is uh, the walkout as well, and again in the kit with the RNID uh, logo uh, for the special day. Uh, but yeah, nice, it's a nice little picture there of the walkout. But yeah, let's get into the game. Let's talk you through it, and I'll stop along the way. Uh, buzz in anytime you like. Uh, okay, early corners for Newcastle. Uh, a lot of early corners, and corners were really. Uh, were really kind to us today. Spurs are useless at corners, but uh, Anderson had a had, both of these came from Gordon a Gordon ball in. But uh, Anderson had a header that uh, went wide. Uh, Burns had a chance as well. Werner had a great chance. Uh, this is all in the 20, first twenty minutes or so. Had a great chance with uh, Brendan Johnson cross, and he probably should have led with his head as Alan Coy said. But uh, he took it, tried to get his foot on it, and it went nowhere. Twenty minutes. Uh, Matters had a body check on Gordon, uh, which was a potential yellow card uh, uh, decision. But uh, then Byrne replied the favour and uh, uh, took took uh, Matters out as well. So again, probably should have been a yellow card, but uh, they cancelled each other out really. Then on thirty minutes, a few of these tonight, and make sure you smash smash that like button because we want one hundred likes for each goal. So that's four hundred likes is your target. Yeah, so first goal, I'll just put this in that because. 
Ian's put YouTube removed the like button. Mods all, all over the world rejoice. Is is that true, or is he is he is Ian just having us on? I, I haven't I've got no idea. I might I, I might check in a minute. Sorry, guys. No idea. No idea. We didn't. We definitely didn't remove it from YouTube. Um, but um, yeah. So thirty minutes. He's at goal. Um, an assist from Gordon. Um, he, he, yeah, Isaac holds his run. Gordon did well um, uh, um, to uh, win the ball first in the, uh, in the first place. He he holds it up. He plays it in, into Isaac, uh, who takes around uh, Van der Ven, who sits him down on his arse, uh, and he finishes. Uh, and yeah, one nil Newcastle. Thoughts on the first goal, Chris? We we'll go to you first. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get balls of talking about these goals. So yeah, first goal. Um, from memory, I think the ball got hoofed forwards by uh, Bruno Gomez. I mean, to be fair, I'm probably being harsh there saying hoofed because I think it was uh, tactically placed, should we say? But yeah, Bruno ball. There was a bit of a scramble on the edge of the box. Bruno clears the ball and looks for Anthony Gordon. Gordon controls it. Udogi, I think it is, gets the ball off him, and it looks like a lost cause, but typifies Anthony Gordon's recent performances, or Anthony Gordon's performances this season, actually. But Anthony Gordon does really well, battles really hard with Udogi, manages to get the ball back. You can see Alexander Izak waiting to go. He's hovering. He's he's saying, give me the ball, give me the ball. Holds his run perfectly. Ball gets played into Izak. He does what he's done remarkably well this season, and on many, many occasions, Um he, he manages to wrong foot uh, Van der Ven and uh, slots the ball home really, really nicely. Um, I'm smiling because uh, I, I was waxing lyrical about Alexander Izak after he put that first one in. And my Everton mate said that Van der Ven fell over. Um, and that <laughs> it had nothing to do with Izak whatsoever. It was just the fact that he fell over. And I said, that's because Izak turned him inside out, left, right, up, down. That's basically what happened. But he seems to think it was just the fact that he fell over. But um, but no, fantastic finish from Alexander Izak. Um, and, you know, do you know what? It was, a, it was a pivotal moment for me, that, because in the first half an hour, it was pretty end-to-end. I actually messaged my uh, Tottenham mate. He's um, a lad who I work with. He's a Tottenham fan. And I said to him, literally two minutes before the goals, who probably wanted to punch me, I said, you know what, for the neutral, this is a really good game. Because it was end-to-ends, it was lots of action. And you're right, you're right Daz, when you say that um, Madison got away with the yellow, as did Byrne. And I thought that, that, you know, the referee was being very, very lenient. But it was pretty, it was pretty neck and neck at that point. But again, moment of class, an absolute fantastic endeavor and you know never say die attitude from gordon basically rescues rescues the ball for newcastle gives it to isaac who as newcastle tweeted ice cold as per and he just buries it so yeah fantastic one nil and um i i was pretty confident at that point you know that we were going to go on but fantastic start definitely was pete your thought thoughts on isaac's first um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant goal. Um, I, I liked, first of all, I, I've, I've always said, I kind of, I always kind of get a feeling around New, with Newcastle, sort of in the first 10 minutes of what I'm going to see. And I'm not going to lie, I was really, I was really happy with what I saw. Um, we had a little bit of bite about us. We had a little bit of energy about us. And um, we were getting a, quite a bit of joy from Tottenham really early on. And it goes back, it, it comes towards the goal. So I think it is Bruno that plays that long ball up. Wasn't the first time, it wasn't the last time. He played that type <laughs> of ball which it became very much a regular theme in the game for him doing that. But um, yeah, Chris has touched on it as well. But what I loved about that moment with Anthony Gordon is your doggy is a big, strong lad. And the fact that he manoeuvres him off the ball and literally grounds him to win that ball, like like you said, that determination, that will to not give something up, allows him to have that ball in play. But he's still got a lot of work to do. To play that ball, it might seem like it was an easy ball in behind, but it's not. People get that wrong all the time and moves break down because that ball that he plays doesn't get played. Um, brilliant for me, Isaac, to keep on his line um, and to stay on side. But then what Isaac does... After that, for what people are arguably saying, one of the best centre backs in the Premier League, um, the way he that's what they've done there. Yeah, that one there, the one that's um, upside down. 
uh, <laughs> but, uh, the, the, the way he destroys him, like, he won't recover from that. He won't recover from that, Mickey, Mickey Van Der Ven. Like, players will be confident now going up against him. He, what Isaac's done is not just not just been done on a big on a big situation for today. This he will will stick with him going forward. The way he destroys him, leaves him for dead. Um, and the ball inside wasn't even great that he cuts inside, but it's perfect. It's just enough that lands in there. But that finish to wrong foot. Uh, Vicario, because Vicario's almost going the other side. He's expecting him to go to the far corner because that's what Isaac does. But I love the way that he's just moved his body last minute, put it into the near near corner. He had no chance, and it was just a great finish. Like it, when Isaac's in front of goal, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried. He is too good. This guy is unbelievable in front of goal. Like, I'm never worried when he's in front of goal. So as soon as he beat um, Van de Ven, I I'm expecting the neck to bulge. And when it does, I am just going absolutely mental, <laughs> as, the, uh, as the voice notes can uh, testify to. Hey, we can play some of those. No, 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 no. We don't <laughs> Good. Need to play any voice notes, but uh, we, 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 were, we were very animated, shall we say. Um, yeah, but no, it was great. Uh, what 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 a goal! And um, you know what, boys, it was really important to get that first goal. It, it has been all season for Newcastle United to get that first goal. And, and when I do, and I don't know if you boys felt like this, when you get when we got that first goal, I always felt that you know this is a game where we're going to get something. I, I just felt I just felt it because we 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 take it, we took the lead. So yeah, superb, superb, mate. Was it? I have those voice voice notes ready, anyway, lads. If you want, if you want to play them, there's nothing incriminating in those voice notes. They're all right, uh, Pete. I think our uh, our Chris. Uh, let, let's go to the, the something else in the chat you want to talk about first. Oh, um, one second. Let me get back to it. There is another super chat. Yeah. Um, thank you, Jerry, for your super chat. Um, Cheers, uh, Jerry. It's, it's what um it's what um it's what we do now not what other teams do. And I think he's referring to, you know, what, yeah. what can happen next, you know, after yeah. with, with these final, what, six, seven games, what, I think six games, um, mm. what we what we can then do. And, and, mm. and yet, uh, in full agreement, um, yeah. I'm sure we'll talk about the league table and, and all the rest of it, but... Yeah, really. And now his question. <laughs> uh, question. Yes. But definitely. let's move on. For now, let's. And you, you had mentioned uh, Pete that you didn't think Van der Ven would ever get over it. Uh, well, he didn't have to wait long to to get over it uh, again because ter uh, one minute later, uh, uh, a back pass uh, from a Spurs player, uh, Gordon get, gets hold of it, uh, and he sits Van der Ven down again. Two nil Newcastle. Cue Gordon with the goal. Cue the celebration. Cue the joint celebration from the boys. Uh, but um, Chris, let's go to you. Your thoughts on your boy Gordon Flash? Yeah. So um, the boys, the boys were getting hammers again by me um, over Anthony Gordon. Um, I was asking them if he was still if he was still overpriced and if they'd have our pants down, as that was the that was the famous line that I kept hearing. Um, there was no comment on that one, funnily enough. But uh, no, Anthony Gordon again. <laughs> Um, proving exactly why as he how and Newcastle decided to fork out the 40 million on him. Um, at the moment, boys, and I've said I've been saying this for weeks now, he, he is one of, if not the informed winger in the league. Like, I can't think of a better winger in the league right now than Anthony Gordon. I mean, there's, n there's nothing this lad can't do at the moment. He's playing on the left, he's playing on the right. And he's causing he's causing defenders all kinds of problems. And again, it's a, it's a defensive mistake. Uh, where Tottenham play a back pass and Anthony Gordon latches onto it quick as anything. And unfortunately for Van der Ven, turns him, Van der Ven falls over again uh, and Anthony Gordon slots it. But you know what? I know it's a defensive mistake and I know that we've capitalised on it and some may say it was a bit of a gift, but there's still still a little bit to do for Anthony Gordon. And, he, he you know, he's calm, he, he keeps his composure and he puts the ball in the back of the net, and that's the most important thing. And funnily enough, I don't even think the um, the commentators were expecting it either, because I don't know uh, what it was like for you boys watching it at home, but um, the stream I was watching, it was uh, like they, they had to shoot to it dead quick. 
And then I only saw the actual goal properly when they did the replay because they were doing commentary. I think they were showing the replay of Alexander Isak's goal. And then Anthony Gordon scored. Um, so I had to watch the full replay. But yeah, terrible defensive error by Spurs. Um, but as I say, you know, you've, you've still got to put these chances away. You've still got to be, you know, on your toes, looking looking for these half chances, these little opportunities. And that's exactly what Anthony Gordon did. Um, and he, he, fin- he finished with, with a plum. It was a, it was an absolutely fantastic finish from him. Um, and then 2-0 up, and I'm thinking, can, can we get five? Can we get five before half-time? And uh, I, think, I think everybody <laughs> in the stadium was thinking that as well because Spurs had just collapsed at this point. Um, and I think that was on the 32nd minute. So it was 2-0 after 32 minutes. And I was thinking we're good for another one here, definitely. Um, but from it being a very close game, it shows you how quickly things can change in the matter of, what, two or three minutes. Uh, all of a sudden, Newcastle were just on top and just dominating at this point. Yeah, because look, I'm with you. Because I, when I was trying to read back uh, what I wrote for the first goal, I remembered that the reason I didn't, I couldn't read my own writing, and I, it actually said shirts buzzing. Uh, but uh, it was because Gordon had scored the next goal, and I, I didn't have time to, to finish what I was writing. But uh, it was just in quick su- succession. But Pete, we'll go to you. So on your thoughts for Gordon's goal, but I think there could be something else in the chat as well. Yeah, there is. Um, uh, this one's all in good humour, and, and I do like it. Thank you to Jordy Mick. Great Jordy time Mick? Chat. Yeah, back Where in the chat. Have? Um, Tottenham Hotspur has happened again. And there's there's been a few Latin <laughs> bursts. I'm not going to lie. Uh, there's been a bit of a, a bit of a sing song in the chat uh, with this particular song, um, and I think it was being sung. Uh, uh, in in St James's Park today. So great time, you Jordy Mick. Thank you for big for, hugs, Jordy Mick. Yeah, definitely. Um, but no, br- brilliant, brilliant stuff. And in the goal, uh, I was in a similar boat to, to Chris because I'm I'm here, I'm there jumping up and down, celebrating in front of the TV, and I'm <laughs> watching the goal back, just absolutely loving it. And then all of a sudden, it just I can hear the roar from the start from the stadium, and I'm just I, I have a- I think Sky and and TNT do this a lot. They keep cutting to other things and not. To where the action is, yeah. Even though they hear yeah. the reaction, it's like I'm hearing something and I'm there at the screen, but I'm still watching the replay. Just yeah, you're like, hurry up, put it on, put it on. <laughs> Luckily enough, as it kicks back to the live feed, I literally see Gordon and he's literally sitting Van der Men down on his ass again, <laughs> twice a couple of minutes, and then uh, just smashing it in in the, up into the up into the goal in there uh, i tell you what like i just i could not believe it um it, and uh, i'm not gonna lie i had that six one in my head again i just thought <laughs> is, it it is is it coming yeah. again because uh, the way we just dismantled them like they looked finished once that second goal went in they looked absolutely finished um and <clears throat> You talked about Anthony Gordon, Chris, and you're absolutely right because I watched him early on in the first half, busted him within the first ten minutes, and he has a run down that right hand side, and he's going, he's going at pace. He's going. Oh, is that the one where he, is that the one where he finds like an extra gear? He's running alongside. Mm. I think it is it a doggy. He's running alongside. Yeah, it's either doggy or one of the two. Yeah, and he gets ahead of him, and you're like, bloody hell, where did that an extra gear come from? Yeah, I know what you mean. And, and, and let's not forget, both Ndoggy and Van de Ven are absolutely rapid. I can't even remember which one it was, but I remember being absolutely stunned that he was leaving this player for dead. Whip, he, I think he whipped a ball in, and I think it gets cleared for a corner. And I'm just like, yeah. or he puts it across goal, it gets cleared. And I'm just like, wow. Like, yeah. one, I'm thinking, wow, like he's got the beating of these guys who are meant to be like top pace, pacey defenders. Yeah. And secondly, I'm thinking, we're getting some joy here. Um, and he's bang up for it, and he was bang up for it. And I tell you what, um, a lot of people questioned him, uh, his goals, his assists, his his contributions. Look, I was one of them at the back end of last season. We weren't seeing it, and I was thinking, you know, are we ever going to see that? But what he's producing now, I don't think anybody um, can question. One, the transfer fee. Even even your blue nose friends cannot question that transfer fee because his value is way above forty five million right now. Um, so it's more than justified. And secondly, he is for me the best left winger in the Premier League this season. 
no doubt about it. There is no left winger that is better than him. I know he did all his good stuff on the right-hand side today, fair, granted. But he is the best left winger in the Premier League. There's no doubt about it. And uh, typified with another goal and assist for those first two. Superb. Brilliant stuff. Agree 100% with you, Pete. I'd even say this. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Stop once is enough. Stop. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, next season. Next season. <laughs> yeah, in that first half, it could be very easy to just go oh, half time two 0 But no, there was plenty more action than that that half to before because thirty four minutes. Isaac nearly in again. Van der Ven stood up this time though. So, uh, it wasn't a B. Two minutes later, Isaac in again. Challenged by Undagi this time prevents. Uh, our, our own destiny, I guess. Uh, like link there. Uh, 39 minutes, Isaac unlucky with the control, and but again, nearly in that's three uh, three times in the space of five minutes, he was nearly in after being two in the lock. Uh, so 41 minutes, a mix up. Then uh, this is a Spurs kind of chance, mix up with a, a long um ball from the kick out. Uh, Burn did. Kick Bentancur in, in the head in the show in the the, the shoulder, but uh, cleared by VAR uh, wasn't wasn't that thing happening there. Uh, we we given nothing there. No, well, it was nothing for me. Mm, well, I thought, mm, go on, go on, Chris, go on. No, I was gonna, I was going to say, do you know what? I think it's always difficult this because when when you know when we get the decision, it's like yeah, it's a right decision. But if that was on the opposition end, I would have been screaming for that because if your player gets kicked in the ass. You know you're want you want the penalty, aren't you? So uh, I don't know. What do you think, Pete? For me, the the conversation is completely void because it was outside the box. Like, was it outside I, the box? I thought it was in the box. Now, for me, it was outside. It was it was out. It, it was outside the box. So as they're coming in, I'm yeah. looking at the positioning of their feet, and and we can talk about that oh. with regards to the new okay. one today. Like mm. the, the the actual. Where that where they're standing at that point, they're not in the box. It's mm. it's like literally just before the line. In my, oh, I am giving my opinion. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, could well be 50 50 mm. And like you said, like if if it's the other way around, you're probably asking the question: like, Is that yeah. a free kick? But I'm looking at where they were and I'm thinking, I actually thought that was what happened. I actually thought that's why it didn't go any further because it was. It wasn't in the box because if it's not in the box, they can't do anything. It's only if it's like a, a major decision that they ah right so okay then ah right, it, okay. Like, like which is why like yeah. obviously with the Man U game they gave the penalty, but because it wasn't in the box, they then had to go back and give it the free kick because the mm. decision had already been made. Even if it was a foul, if they'd have looked back, if it's not in the box, nothing happens. So mm. that's why I thought that that's why VAR did nothing with it because they've looked at it and they've seen it's not in the box. So that that was my initial reaction. I thought, oh, is it in the box? It's not for me. It doesn't matter because it's not. Yeah. It's not in the street. Mm. Um, but yeah, if it was the other way around, I'd be saying I'd be asking the question. But yeah, that that was what I got. I don't know, Daz, whether you thought the same or, or anything different. I was just happy for cleared it, cleared it, get on with the game. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, that because that brought us into halftime, two 0 up. Uh, going into halftime, happy days. Uh, so into the second half, um, fifty minutes. Dubs as it produces a save, but he just fumbled it. He collects it again. You started to think, oh maybe, uh, but no, fifty one minutes. Uh, another Isaac goal because Bruno uh, class ball. Isaac turns on the halfway line and sprints and goes for it. Uh, uh, just one on one with the keeper and slots it into the corner of the net. Three nil Newcastle. Too easy, too easy Spurs. Uh, but Chris, your thoughts on Isaac's second and our third and Isaac in the hunt for the golden boot now on 17 Premier League goals and 20 goals overall for the season. Do you know what, mate? Yeah, it's a great point. I, I hadn't realised how quickly Alexander Izak had shot up the uh, goal-scoring charts. Obviously, I know week in, week out, he's scoring goals. But when they flashed that up on the screen, I thought, bloody hell, he's two off Haaland here. Like, he's got he's got an outside chance, particularly with the fixtures we've got coming up and the vein of form that he's in. He's got a fantastic chance. Bearing in mind, Salah, Salah can't hit a, a cow's backside with a banjo with the minute, can he? So <laughs> you, you could argue that Salah may be out the race. Um, Ollie Watkins... 
yeah, I think he's one ahead of Isaac at the moment. I think he's on 18, uh, which is a good return for him, don't get me wrong. But um, bear in mind, Holly Watkins has played a lot more football than Alexander Isaac. It just kind of it just kind of lick it makes you lick your lips for next season, doesn't it? Because if Alexander Isaac's doing this now, he scored what 17 goals, is it? Um yep. 17 goals in I, I don't even know how many I don't even know how many appearances. Um but I know that you know he's he's missed good chunks of the season, uh, so it's it's exciting times. But in terms of his goals, as like again, as Eddie Howe's described him, as I've been describing him in past weeks, um, he is just elite. He's just elite. Um, you know, I'm not quite sure what Mickey Van der Ven's doing. I think he's forgotten the fact that you can't be offside if you're in your own half. Uh, Mickey Van der Ven's playing a really high line, so much so he's playing the line in our half. Uh, and then turns to look at Isaac, and Isaac's in our half. Then starts running, and that's that's it. That's it, it, it's a it's a real schoolboy error. Got to be honest. But Alexander Isaac bends his run perfectly. You can see he's he's basically on the half turn, looking at looking at Bruno, going put it there, put it there, and I'll get it. Um, but I think it was Ali McCoy who was on commentary when I was watching, and he mm. made a fantastic point. He said, you know, Alexander Isaac is still again. There's still a lot to do. Um, but the fact that he brings the ball down opens his body up so that, you know, the, the goalkeeper's then questioning, is he, is he going to go to me near side? Is he going to go to me far side? And before he's even had time to f- to think about it, Isaac's just, Isaac's just pinged it into the bottom corner. Fantastic finish. Um, again, a fantastic through ball from uh, Bruno, which again, apparently was a hoof up the field, according to the, according to the Blue Boys. <laughs> um, but I'm getting used to this at this point. But yeah, uh, abs- absolutely. Absolutely fantastic, and um, yeah, I knew the game was done and dusted then, uh, and I made it like one of because it capped off a fantastic performance. And bearing in mind at that point, he's at he's at could have had four or five, like that. That's that's how many like heart, good chances he had. A couple of them are half chances, but he'll be frustrated that he hasn't gone home with the uh, with the match ball uh, today because he couldn't have to be a four quite easily. But fantastic finish, three nil up, points in the bag. He could have potentially taken home the golden boot today, the way the amount of chances uh, that yeah. came his way. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pete, your thoughts on Isaac's second and our third? Um, it was an absolute, it was a goal of sheer class and beauty. Um, you know, your your blue nose mates, they 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 don't watch very good football very often, do they? Oh mate, they just they just they just they, send it out the hook trying to get me. Yeah. They know full well that is sheer class. They know it. They know it is, but they just hate it. They hate it. The problem is they've been watching too much of a Jesse Garner a gay and a, a James Garner that you know yeah. can barely play a five yard pass to themselves. Like Gilfie yeah. Sigerson. Yeah. Oh, like wow. Well. Less spoken about him the better. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's throw that in there. Should we use the word ongoing? Should we say the, <laughs> his situation? But uh, but you're absolutely right, guys. Um, look, Bruno, Bruno, and Isaac are just in sync. That he he knows he puts it into an area, and Isaac's gonna go. That's what that's what a partnership is, and, and they certainly have that. Um, it's a great bending run, and it, it was really good to hear that he he said in his interview after the game that he watches his videos back of his runs and he watches the way he makes his movements. It's something that he does, and as a striker, you should because you need to know where you can improve, and he clearly has improved on that um, because the run is perfect, and obviously he's in the zone off. It's not offside. Um, Van der Ven clearly didn't know that, but still, I am so impressed with the work that he did, he did after that point because he gets in and he gets the ball under control and he's down. But the bit that absolutely floors Van der Ven is because Isaac's already had three other opportunities in the, in the first half where he's threw one on one against Van der Ven and cut inside. And I know he did, he's, I know he said he didn't mean to do it. But it absolutely threw Van der Ven because he almost faints to cut inside it, but doesn't. So Van der Ven stops, <laughs> thinks he's going inside. Oh, no, not, not again! <laughs> yeah, and, and it almost it almost had that feeling like he was like, please, like I, I've had enough. Like he's almost waving the white flag, like we're doing space. Tapping out on the one the manager out. Yeah, exactly that. Is one of the the white flags out? It does. I'm done. <laughs> but like literally, he he does that little faint. And Van der Ben stops, and that gives him enough time to just smash the ball into the bottom corner. Um, 
it does help that Vicario sticks to his line. He does remind me of Martin Dubravka a lot. He doesn't come out for things at all. That definitely played into um, Isaac's favour. But you cannot you cannot take away the run, the man, the manoeuvre, the little feint, and then the finish. Like again, when he's in that position, I'm just I'm waiting for the net to bulge. And when the net bulges, we go mad. And at that point, I'm just like I'm literally there. Me I'm messaging you guys, but I'm like literally messaging a hand on head. I cannot believe what I'm watching right now. Like it was just unbelievable. Wow. Super. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And those Arsenal fans can stop twerking uh, towards Isaac as well, by the way. They Dan Potts, stay clear. He, he's he's going nowhere. He's, He's twerking something rotten at the moment. A hundred percent. He's all in. Like I, I've got Arsenal fans that are saying they want their whole summer budget blown on Isaac. That's it. They just, can't afford them. Can't afford them, mate. Can't afford them. <coughs> Keep Too saying it. Arsenal cannot afford Alexander Isaac. One, nope. he's not going. No one can. Two, they can't afford it. It's a non right. Non starter is right. Also a non-starter was a penalty shout from us on uh, Emerson Royal. Um, yeah, it was a corner. Was a uh, result. It kind of came off the back of his hands. He used his hands behind his back. So it was it was never a penalty. Uh, Fifty-seven minutes. Uh, yes, the commentators were talking about Sonny and Chair, but there was no more Sonny and Chair uh, on on screen because Son was subbed off after fifty-seven minutes. Uh, strange, but they're 3 0 down at that stage. Uh, 62 minutes, Anderson had a shot that was saved. Uh, another corner. Uh, even though so, Newcastle is so impressive, the press, even when we're 3 0 up and they're still trying to run down everything, absolutely amazing. Our front three uh, leading, leading it off. Uh, 76 minutes, uh, Murphy off, Tino on. Tino involved straight away, a great ball from the outside of the foot from Bruno. Uh, cross in from Tino, uh, just kind of found its, its way ahead of Isaac. Actually, that's one thing I'd, I'd have Tino working on in the summer is, is just his crossing. Uh, apart from that, he's unbelievable. Um, 80 Mets, Kraft hit, Kraft, yes, Kraft hit the post uh, uh, with his kind of bouncing kind of a shot. 85 Mets. Gordon has a chance after a Barnes pass. Uh, should have hit it first time and buried it. Um, blocked one to a corner. Get the fingers ready, lads. Start twirling them. Because uh, he rises, Char, that man, Char, rises from a corner like a salmon leaping out of the water and uh, heads it to the <laughs> back of the net. 4-0 Newcastle. 4-0 against Spurs. The game that we, we predicted We'll be happy with the draw, I'm afraid, but we'll we'll take the we'll take the victory. But Char to, uh, makes it for uh, cue the celebrations as well uh, from Char, and hit that the same hit in the header. Pete, we'll go to you with your thoughts on Char's uh, goal and our fourth in that game. Well, well, firstly, I've got to, I've got to big up Anthony Gordon because um, his his set pieces have been so so good recently. Yeah. Um, like obviously, since Trippy has been out of the team, he's been taking more responsibility with his set pieces, and they've been good. There's been varied, yeah. Some have have kind of gone f uh, like front post, and, and they've been cleared. Um, but actually, you know, more often than not, he gets it right. And and the key for me is that he's putting them into areas where we're actually causing some problems in the box. And it's a superb ball. It's a brilliant ball. Clearly, they've worked on it, and it's a great diagonal sort of run. Um, from Shaw, he kind of runs in a diagonal motion to to get himself into that position to be able to really attack the ball. It's, it's a strange run, but it's but it's a run to beat your marker in order to create some space. And he does, and as soon as he gets there, he, he just needs to he just needs to guide it into the far corner. Like there was a problem with Tottenham defending set pieces all day, all day long. They really really struggled with it. They couldn't handle it. They couldn't handle the movement. They couldn't handle the physicality that we were giving them in the box. Vicario doesn't want to come for anything. I thought Bruno played a perfect role all day, just sitting on Vicario, not letting him out. Um, but it's a great ball in and Shaw bullet header into the far corner. We know he's good in the air, but we don't. A lot of things I tend to find, particularly when Trippi is taking set pieces, are aimed towards Dan Byrne, but he's already he's always heavily marked. So sometimes we do need to aim for someone else and use Byrne as a decoy. And that's it's kind of what we did today. Uh, and no one really expects Shaw to be 
good and get on the end of it, but we know how good he is. And it's a great finish. And at that point, <sighs> hands behind my back. So far, <laughs> if I had a cigar like Jimmy the other night, I'd have had one and it's game over. And that's exactly what I said to you boys uh, on, the, on the voice note. At that point, it's coming home. Chris? Thoughts. Yeah, just, yeah, just a uh, a fantastic header. I mean, if if I was a Tottenham fan, I'd be deeply disappointed because if you actually watch it back, <laughs> Fabian Charles the only one that jumps in the whole box, uh, which is really odd. He, he looks like he's about twelve foot when he when he jumps up to take the header. Fantastic bullet header though. But Pete Wright, um, Anthony Gordon's deliveries, particularly from set pieces this season, have just been fantastic. Um, you know, fantastic ball in. And we we warned them. Spurs were getting warned. I mean, I think, I think today we had sixteen corners, sixteen corners like that. that that's ridiculous. And you know, Ange Postecoglou has got to be looking at that and going, There's something wrong here. Because how how I think we had three or four of those in the first three or four minutes. Um, Tottenham just couldn't. You know, it was as if like their easiest option was just to keep kicking it out for the corner. And time and time again, we were putting good good balls in the box, and it, it was only a matter of time before we punished them. But yeah, uh, Fabian Charvo is really well for it. And you know what? It was nice because, I mean, I know we'll probably get to our man of the match or as we normally do it, you know, our top three. Um, but both both Anthony Gordon and Fabian Shaw were in my top three, and um, so it was nice for them to cap it off at the end because uh, I thought both of them played incredibly well, but. Unfortunately, there's only one, one man who's going to finish top of my list today, and I think you all know who that is. But um, but fantastic, fantastic. Um, you know, it was a it was a fantastic goal to cap off a fantastic day because uh, the the team played really well. Loads and loads of players had really good games today, um, and really we should have a top five or a top seven. There was that many good players. Um, but yeah, fantastic goal, great delivery from Anthony Gordon, and uh, finished really well with Fabian Shaw. And that that I'll never ever get bored of that celebration ever. Love it, love it, love it too. But it wasn't over yet because um, eighty-seven minutes, Barnes off, Hall on, uh, Anderson off, Richie on, uh, ninety-one minutes, Bruno off, White on, and that means he has escaped. He's gone through with us this is 11 games, it felt like forever uh, with him and not, not being able to, to go that mentality of, of, of the tightrope he was walking, I, I guess. But yeah, he's clear. Uh, he's clear now. And uh, good luck to Crystal Palace. They're getting a, a battering on uh, when we play again, that's for sure, for Bruno. Uh, but Char off as well. And um, Dummett, that man Dummett. Is how, there's only so much um, damage he could do in the last four minutes, I suppose. Uh, but then um, some handbags at, at full time. I, I had to turn it off because I was going then. But uh, um, you're, uh, and what was all that about? Was that an um, Argentinian Brazil uh, situation there? Off or yeah, that? yeah, I think it was um it was it was Bruno Romero, wasn't it? I mean, we know Romero is a bit of a hothead anyway, but obviously some words got exchanged. I noticed the back of Bruno's shirt was like hanging off, so I don't know whether Romero had left one on Bruno or just pulled his shirt or whatever he'd done. Um, but yeah, clearly, clearly not happy. I mean, I, do you know what? I don't mind stuff like that because if I'm a, if I'm a man if I'm the Tottenham manager and I'm seeing that. Yeah, you don't want your players to be indisciplined, but also it shows that they're bothered. It shows that they're asked. Um, so I, I wasn't particularly, I wouldn't be particularly bothered to see Romero do that because at least it shows, you know, he, he actually is hurting and he doesn't want to lose. Um, but you know, Bruno, Bruno doing what Bruno does. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was, it was just basically handbags from what I saw. That it was just Romero really annoyed at the and frustrated at the situation, and Bruno probably just poking the target really. Hmm. Now you're probably all wondering, does it, does this mean that? There's an addition in the Isaac household. And you're right, there is, because here he gets another puppy. And <laughs> Van der Ver is in the, the, the Van der Ven is in the background there as well. He just fell off the wall, I think. Humpy don't <laughs> uh, poor him. Um, but yeah, love to love to see the collection there that either has got going. He's probably uh, love it. And the, the other great pictures as well is this one. Euphoria. Uh, with the, the the team shot in the dressing room afterwards, I think they're um, J Sevens. Yeah. yeah, I think they're kids in the front, and and the, yeah, he's in the back there, right in front of Eddie. Yeah, 
John into himself. Right, it's mates now we, now we signed the new deal, isn't it? Yeah. Best, yeah. Best <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there. that actually... Yeah, Joe Willick's in there. And I was just going to say, Joe Willick's in there. I think uh, Miggy's at the front there. So you've got some of the injured players that are, that are in and around it as well, which was nice to see. Yeah, also nice to see. Cool. Um, yeah, and that foot, that um, feed that you sent out to us as well, Pete, about uh, Joe Linton and the, the day of the signing of the contract, that was cool as well. Oh, to see the, the really behind the scenes, really scenes like, out of him going to the stadium and all the, the pictures and everyone congratulating him. So, yeah, the loving uh, just shows you what how it, what it means and what it means to, to him as well. Uh, but yeah, that was the game, guys. That's the game I will walk through back. Um, um, Let's go for it with your top three, so Chris. Uh, you started it off there. You, who was it? What was your top three? There were so many to choose from. Um, go on, you, you give us your 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 three first, and we go from there. I'll give you I'll give you my three in descending order. Um, so number three was um, Fabian Shaw. Um, I feel so harsh putting Fabian Shaw in number three because I thought he was absolutely brilliant. Um, he was he was colossal at the back, and then he caps it off with a fantastic goal at the other end. I just thought he was superb. Um, when you think, you know, Tottenham had some really good players there. You know, they had Brennan Johnson, they had um, Hyun Min Son, and they had um, Timo Werner. And then, obviously, you know, they brought on the likes of Kulusevski, um, and they didn't cause Fabian Shah any bother at all. Uh, I thought Fabian Shah was absolutely brilliant today. So he was my number three. My number two was Anthony Gordon. Um, again, heavily involved heavily involved in three of the goals, wasn't he? Um, so obviously, you know, he, he did great work for Isaac's first, scored the seconds, and then obviously put the put the ball on Fabian Charles head for the fourth. So I had to, had to get, uh, give Anthony Gordon um, credit today. But the main man, Alexander Isaac, he was my number one. Um, two fantastic goals. And he he is our talisman. He, he is, he is, he's the main man now. Um, I think a lot of us felt he was the main man and a lot of us always, you know, thought, you know, now that as soon as he came into the club, he would be the number one. But now there's no there's no dispute. There's no argument to that. Alexander Izak, he, he's going to take us on to bigger and better things next season. I really, really believe it. And if we can keep him fit and keep him on the pitch, we, we've we arguably got one of, if not the best striker in the league, in my opinion, um, because he's just unbelievable. And really, the key thing for me this season or this summer is just to keep an hold of him because he's that good. Um, and like I say, a fully fit Alexander Isak next season. If he's if he's if he's touching twenty goals this season, which I think he'll get between now and the end of the season, I expect him to get three goals. So that'll mean he gets twenty Premier League goals next season. He's got to be getting twenty five in a, in a in a you know a, a not so injury ravaged team. Alexander Isak's more than capable of getting twenty five goals next season all day long. So yeah, that's my top three. I'm going to jump in next. Sorry, Pete, I'm going to jump in okay. here because I, I, can, I can't pick a, a top three. I'm just thinking about here because all those three oh, that you've, you've picked, I'm going to I'm going to throw two more in because yeah. I thought I thought this man Anderson was class as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, yeah. he he was everywhere over first uh, today. I thought he, he was absolutely class and and you know shout out to Bruno as well because yeah. like the, those the, those assists and again. I suppose the collective keeping it, keeping his head together, uh, for and not getting that, that, that yellow card. And I think there's there's a Keith Downey put out a tweet about um what was what Eddie said about the, he they had the conversation with them uh, uh, uh in the run up to to before at the start of this this uh cycle of trying trying to not get that yellow card and and he, he like came away from it going it's not going to happen kind of thing. Uh, but, but he he did promise them he wasn't going to get a yellow card and fair play to him. It worked out. So, top five. There we go. We will throw those two in 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 the mix as well. But Pete, let's go to your your thoughts. Um, for me, uh, it's it, it's 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 really hard because I think everyone had a, a fantastic game. I, I don't think anybody had a bad game. Uh, but the three, um, and it's in no particular order. Um, the three that really stood out for me, uh, one, Anthony Gordon. Uh, absolutely sensational. Again, I've said it before, best left winger in the Premier League. And, and what he's been able to do now is this. Um, we'll just take the comment away for a sec. Um, Anthony Gordon now has scored 
a goal or had a big involvement against every single one of the top six. Now, it's always a question mark for top quality players. It's all right scoring against the lower teams, but can you do it against the very best? Anthony Gordon has proven both. Anthony Gordon can do the business against the lower league teams, um, but also he can do it against the absolute very best. And he proved it again today. I'm not taking anything away from Spurs. Spurs are a very good team. And I've enjoyed watching play, watching Spurs play this season because they've played some great football. But the way in which he dismantled some of their players, and Doggy, who is arguably the best left back in the Premier League, the way he dismantled him today and made him look distinctly average is not easy to do. And he has been sensational and proved again that he isn't just here as a flash in the pan. He's proved all season that he's consistent and that he's going to come and do it again um, next season and beyond. Um, he is, for me, the real deal. And I'm really excited to see him uh, do that. Uh, from Alexander Isak, uh, for me, he is the complete striker. He is the most and best complete striker in the Premier League. Other strikers like Haaland are good goal scorers, great goal scorers. Um, some work hard off the ball, maybe better than Izak. But Alexander Izak has the whole package. He is everything. Um, and we, we I've, I've been trading some comments on socials with, with Potts today about Izak. And he's been putting it into the top man chat and all the rest of it. And I get it. He loves him. But so do we. And, and the reality is, is that we would be failing our, our own club if we sold Alexander Izak this summer. We would be failing Newcastle United and this project if we sold him. Mm -hmm. It's all right talking about PSR and all the rest of it. I had a conversation with the um, the Geordies Down South boys, um, the likes of Seb, the likes of Emeka, the likes of Darren, all those boys that tend to come in the chat or watch the show. And I made a point and I said, they asked me the question, actually. They said, uh, you know, w w would you would you sell Alexander Isaac? And I said, there is no way I'm selling an Alexander Isaac. Everyone's talking about PSR. I don't care. I would take having a lesser summer budget this summer if it meant keeping Alexander Isaac at this club because you can't replace him. We're talking about Benjamin Sesco's and players like that coming in the summer. They're not Alexander Isaac. They're not as good as him. We would be getting a lesser striker into the club if we sold him. So we need to do everything we possibly can to keep him at the club to build this team around him. Because there isn't anyone else like him out there. Strikers are a premium. And there's not many of them at the moment. And he, scoring 21 goals this season, despite the fact that he's missed about 10 plus games, and despite the fact that through the month of December, played injured, has still amassed 21 goals this season in all competitions. For me, I'm absolutely stunned. I shouldn't be stunned, but I am. But it just goes to show of how good he is. And you think a full season, keeping him fit, looking after him, he's getting 25 most seasons. There's no doubt about it. Um, so for me, the way he destroyed that back line, people talk about Romero, Van der Ven as top, top players. They are. He made them look average today and he just showed what he's all about. He, he, he had... He was chomping at the bit today. And that's the kind of Isaac I need to see for the remaining six games of the season. Um, and lastly, I've got to give the shout out to this boy. Um, I tweeted out about him earlier. Um, Elliot Anderson. This boy, and I'll talk about this in, the, in, in a bit of a second in a bit more detail. This boy was absolutely sensational today. Yeah. Honestly, this is that is the best game I've ever seen Elliot Anderson play for Newcastle United. He was unbelievable. And it wouldn't be all of the stuff that you see right in front of your eye. There's a lot of stuff that he did today behind the scenes, things that you won't see and be obvious if you're watching the game, just for watching the game, that, that I just looked at and I just thought, wow, like we have a player on our hands. And if he was fit and ready when we lost Joe Linton, we wouldn't have missed Joe Linton as much in that midfield. Uh, and again, I, I'll, I'll kind of expand on that in just a second. But that guy there is very, very unlucky to not be getting man of the match because he put in a man of the match performance. Yes, he didn't score. Yes, he might have not got an assist. But I'll tell you what, he was one of the biggest reasons why we did not concede today. He was brilliant. And you know what? We're talking about getting midfielders in and this, that and the other. 
and we may well need another midfielder coming in. But I tell you what, we've gained a midfielder in recent weeks with him in the team. There's no doubt about it. So those three were my absolute standouts. Um, Honourable shout out, Dan Byrne. Put my hands up. I've hammered yeah. him this season. So many people have hammered him this season. But in that centre back role, um, although an orth uh, uh, an author an orthodox role today, he has been absolutely brilliant and fair play to him. Nice one. Uh, let's take a short break, as in, because we're going to read out some sponsors uh, info. Uh, but yet, yeah, we're not finished yet. We've got more to discuss about this game. But shout out, you'll notice uh, scrolling on the bottom of the screen there, you'll see the code uh, for 20% off and free shipping. And the, that code is loaded20, and that's available through manscaped.com. So, support for Loader Magazine UFC is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Shaving your jewels doesn't have to be risky business anymore, thanks to the Lawmore 5.0 Ultra. This trimmer is all about keeping things smooth and safe, uh, so you can trim with confidence, treat your wrinkled berries, yes, this is the bit you started laughing at, Chris, uh, and join the <laughs> 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by uh, going to manscaped.com to get 20% off plus free, free shipping with the code LOADED20. Yeah, so as uh, the lads put um, some of the pictures of the products are on screen there, go check that out. And don't forget to use the code and you, for, your, for your discount off. Uh, also, shout out as well to our other sponsors in the shape of uh, the radiatorshed.com. We'll move this back for a second. The radiatorshed.com for all your radiator needs this time. Uh, so if you need to dry off those wrinkle berries, stand beside one of these lovely radiators <laughs> that Russ has available. Uh, That's a and, fantastic uh, segue that does. Do the, do the link in. Do the link in. <laughs> and if you need to to uh, hose yourself down, why not contact H2O <laughs> Bathroom Design Co. where they have all the, your showers and everything you might need. Uh, so go check that out. Go check out the website on H2O Bathroom Design Co. for all the latest there. So that's a shout out to our sponsors. Very well done, that does. I've got to say, mate. You, you, you've you've thought about that, haven't you? Yeah, I like that. The wrinkle no, I haven't. You've worn really them off haven't. and then you washed them off. Fantastic. Fantastic. I really haven't. Trust me, Chris. I've not <laughs> thought about it. Uh, but... Let's let's move on, and I think Pete, we're going to go to the tactics board next. Ooh. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll drop it up on the screen um, now. Um, I haven't put the Tottenham team in. Uh, if you want me to put the Tottenham team in, I will. But um, I'm, I've literally just set up our team, how it kind of looked um, as we uh, as we saw the uh, the lineup. So let me um, just present it to you. Uh, here we are. So, uh, this is kind of how it looked. Uh, as we normally do on away days, we put, we put the team out. It's kind of like set up like this. Um, we had obviously Barnes on the left, Gordon on the right. And this is kind of like the old, the, the normal setup. But it was a little bit different because, um, you know, the way in which we set up, when I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, oh, God, it's crap playing centre back. But it, it wasn't actually how it was meant to be in terms of the setup and this and someone put it in the chat and i have to say it, it, it hasn't really been spoken about enough i know sort of luke edwards may have touched on it after the game today but eddie howe has to take a huge amount of credit for this win today uh, because he is a big reason for why newcastle united got this win and the reason being is because we had two phases of setting up um, this is kind of how we set up uh, when we're on the ball. Uh, we set up how we normally set up. It's kind of in this position. Maybe uh, Murphy a little bit higher up because he tends to connect with Longstaff and Gordon moving forward. But this is ultimately how we kind of set up. But the way in which we won the game and the reason why, for me, that we got the clean sheet is the way we set up without the ball. And we you could see it, it was obvious during the game. And when we set up without the ball, it was literally like this. And we came across, and that was almost how we set up. We built ourselves a wall, and we asked Tottenham a question, and we, and we said to Tottenham, break us down. Can you break us down? And it was almost literally, and I'm putting us in the positions, this is kind of how we set up without the ball is that we had 
Barnes took in here. We had a two midfield here with Longstaff and Bruno to block anything in these channels where their players were tending to pick up in the number 10 positions. And we had Anderson, which is why I had him performing a man of the match performance is because they tried to target our left hand side because they saw this man as the weakness. So what we did, we brought the enforcer on the pitch and we had the enforcer here to stop them playing. So anyone that was playing down this side had to come through him first. And it was more obvious in the second half, particularly when we're in the league, in the lead and the way we, we set up, he played a key role in chaperone in this area. And what this allowed Barnes to do is either tuck in as a centre or come right out here as part of that counter-attack. And it meant that he didn't have to do the defensive responsibilities because we've talked about it before. Barnes isn't an Anthony Gordon. You won't see Barnes do this for 90 minutes. That's not his game. But what you'll see him do is he'll lurk here and be broken on the counter. And he's devastated that way. We saw him doing that again today. So this role here was a very specific role. And you could see in parts of the game where normally you would shift and you would be a three and you would ask Anderson to do a role in here and move forward. He would always drift himself out into that position. I'm thinking, why is he doing that? But then you see that most of Tottenham's play came down this side and they were desperate to get in there. And he just shut up shop. And everything was here to try and block the two lines in here. So, look, if I go to Tottenham, uh, they um, they had the likes of Benton Core, but in particular, they had Madison filling in these little pockets. They had Son that was playing through the middle, um, and I'll only just put a, I'll only put a couple of them on. They had Madison like filling in these little pockets here, Son in the middle, uh, Timo Werner here, and they had. Uh, who was the other one? They had Benton Court and Eve Basuma. Um so, Brennan, and Brennan Johnson as well. He was he was uh... Yeah, sorry, that's right. Brennan Johnson up here. Well I can't find Eve Basuma. Um I did say Oh, you've got him on the pitch, mate. No, um Benton Court, sorry. <laughs> Benton um, Court, he's 30. If that helps, he's number 30. Uh, I, I I had him on, but um, I think I had to add him on, and I did, I, I don't think I saved it. But um, Benton Cole would have been around here because he plays more of a deeper role. So this is how Tottenham tried to set up throughout the game, and Brendan Johnson was trying to attack down here. Um, he, he, they were they were really really wide, and they touched on it during the game. They were literally touching um, the the kind of the touch lines here, and, and Son was playing through the gaps, as was Madison, and. Bruno did a great job in blocking there. Longstaff as well. Anderson. Yeah, that was probably the worst game I've seen James Madison play for a long time. Um, yeah. He was not good um, at all. Uh, and, and neither was Son. Because the reason being is because our setup in defensive positions blocked anything coming through. So when you see the, the balls being played through, and I'll, I'll add a ball in, in just for... So if Basuma or Bentancourt, I've not got Bentancourt on the pitch, but if either of them were trying to play balls through, Pedro Porro from out wide trying to play balls into areas and Doggy trying to come into these areas here, anything coming through was literally getting blocked. And the big thing was, is that we anticipated everything. The amount of time Shaw anticipated the ball coming in and nicked the ball in, burn exactly the same, Longstaff the same, Anderson coming in here to block off Madison time and time again. Murphy doing the same. We, their, anti their anticipation, they were so switched on today. <clears throat> and they had to be. Because Tottenham are a good side. I keep saying it, and they are. They're a good side. But we made them look average because our work off the ball was just as good as what we did when we, do, when we won the ball. And the example for the goal is Bruno playing this ball over the top, bending his run into goal, and applying the finish. And that's what we did. And I have to say, boys, we have, and I had a laugh and a joke with Lawless about this after the game, because we have an, we have adopted an, a counter-attacking style of play. We have changed the way we've played. We are not this high, we are in stages, high press, high intensity, but we're not doing it for 95 minutes anymore. We're doing it in stages no. throughout the game. We're being really smart with it. But we're saying to these teams, come and break us down. Because we know we've got pace. Isaac, Barnes, Gordon, Murphy on the overlap. Anderson making the runs in and around Barnes. The overlapping runs today from Anderson were brilliant. Okay, we've got players in these positions to push up the pitch. And it was really, really impressive to see how we, we 
outsmarted a manager in Ange Postacoglu who's been to- talked about as revolutionary in the Premier League. We made him look really poor. And so many in the chat, and I think um, one or two have touched on it, Tottenham fans aren't happy. Tottenham fans tonight are saying they're not impressed with Ange and his management and uh, uh, Ange Ball and all the rest of it. They're hammering him tonight. And that's because of what we did. But more importantly, that's because of how Eddie Howe set us up. So that's, that was just something that I noticed about the way we set up. And I'll just put them back because I don't know if you boys want to mention anything or touch on anything in, in there. Well, I just I want to say one thing that, that I don't think it, that uh, Jackson's is, is an under six team is ready for you as a coach, Pete. Uh, yeah, they don't know what's, what's, got, what's got ahead of them. I'm not ready for it. I'm not going to lie. But, uh, <laughs> but no, it's um, like it, it's just these are just little things that I noticed throughout the game. And it was more obvious in the second half because the pace of the game really slowed down. And you could see the, 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 the setup, the positioning, the way we defended. And it was really good. So, I mean, Anderson wasn't a left back. He wasn't a left wing back. But what he did, he played, when we had the board, he played it as a three. But he knew his role, that when we didn't have the board, he'd have slotted in there and we knew what we needed to do in the transition. Gordon and Isaac, and you could see it for um, Alexander Isaac's first goal. You talked about it, Chris. Gordon wins the ball in this area here, middle. He's not out wide. He wins it here because at that point in the game, this is how we almost set up. Gordon wins the ball in the middle because they're almost playing as a two and they're able to connect, find the ball in, he's out, does the rest. And that was like we we, we set up differently in different stages. Um, And that's what a good manager does. And I get so annoyed when other opposition uh, fans talk to me about Eddie Howe not being good enough to play at this level. You don't set up a team like that if you're not good enough to play, to manage at this level. That is a top level management structure that he's put together for his team to win that game today against a very good team. Yeah, because all the talk was that before the, the game on, on BT, you, yeah, not you sure if you saw that, but P, you, you probably did, Chris, was about uh, Undoggy and Paraparo and how they uh, move in from the wings as well and, and the way they, they kind of disrupt and, and defenders don't know where, what to do then because do they track them, do they not? And, and just the, the, some of the, the tactics that, that And has, has applied this this season uh, that, has, that has worked for them. But uh, I can't believe they're that Spurs fans and are... are, are, are uh, are going after Ange tonight, but um, uh, Spurs uh, King TV is, is is in the chat as well. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, but yeah, uh, interesting stuff. Chris, anything you want to say? I think I think the difficulty, um, and I'm I'm trying to see this from a Spurs fans' perspective. I mean, I, I looked at that team today, and the only the only player I can think that Spurs were missing today, and tell me if I'm wrong, um, you know, Spurs King TV, tell me if I'm wrong, but the only real player that I think Tottenham were missing, um, who would be classed as like a first team player, was Richarlison, and in many in many in many cases, I know he's a bit of a he splits the fan base a little bit with Charles and some some like him through the middle, some prefer some through the middle. Um, so I suppose you know you would probably be able to answer that far better than me. But I think this is the frustration. Tottenham have had a couple of key injuries, but you know, the likes of Madison's returns, the likes of Sars returns. Um, and I think that's probably why they're getting so frustrated. And Spurs, Spurs, you know, have had a good season. Um and it's kind of fell away. I mean, someone wrote in the chat there that, you know, since January, they've not been playing very well. And they, they made a fantastic start under Ange. And I think some people were thinking that, you know, they may be able to kind of push push that top three, top two, who knows? Certainly at the start of the season, it looked that way. But they've just kind of fell away. And they just did. I, I thought today I was, I was really taken aback at how easily we kind of brushed Spurs aside. Bear in mind, Spurs are, you know, in, you know, in the Champions League positions, top four. Um, it surprised me how how much ease we swept them to one side because, you know, when you see Hyung Min Song getting hooked after fifty seven minutes mm-hmm. and James Madison coming off and he didn't have a good game at all, it does make you wonder. And there was a lot of question marks. The commentator was going uh, particularly deep on Vicario, and since Vicario has come into Spurs, I've been really impressed with him. But the commentator was. Uh, Going in hard on him, you know, saying about him being very uncomfortable when the the ball's getting whipped into the box and he doesn't want to come for it. And unfortunately, that was highlighted. Um, I, I think he, he he had a nasty challenge from someone earlier in the season, and they're saying that he never reco- properly recovered from it. 
um, mentally, I mean. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I was surprised by Spurs today, but on the other hand, I thought Eddie Howe got his tactics spot on. And a few people in the chat have said it, and Pete's already alluded to it. You know, the fact that Elliot Anderson played a key role today. Um, you know, he he was absolutely fantastic, and uh, I just I just think there were so many good performances today. I mean, even bloody Emil Kraft nearly got his name on this on the uh, on the score sheet as yeah. well, which was which was brilliant. You know, um, it's it's crazy, isn't it, lads? Looking at this and looking at this team and thinking, do you know what we're missing? I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say 11, 12 players because a couple of those players, as as my mates do point out to me on uh, quite regularly, they're not first team eleven players, but we've got a good six or seven at least first team players out um who you know you were class as first team players or ones that could come off the bench and make an impact at the very least and the fact well, that we're missing all these players is testament to us as a team sorry pete there you go yeah <laughs> so, there, there you go so yeah you can see pope trippier botman tonali joe linton willock miggy <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, there's, there's key players there, isn't there? There's real, real key players there. How many of them start for you? I know, so I was just thinking, so Pope starts. Um, I think Trippier starts. Mm -hmm. Botman starts. Yeah. Tonali yeah. starts. Yeah. Joe Linton starts. Yeah. Mm, well, by, by process of elimination, if you're not putting Gordon on the right, Miggy would start. Um, not now. Not not now. not now, not after that performance, no, because Gordon Gordon was absolutely brilliant, by the way. In fact, I said this on the voice note, I should mention this. Um, did, yeah. Gordon has played right wing a few times and he hasn't looked as effective, but today he just looked unbelievable. And Pete, you mentioned it when we first signed Gordon, didn't you, that you know, you, you thought that Gordon would probably play on the right. Um, a few of my Everton mates were saying, you know, he tended to play on the left or maybe as a number 10, which he did a lot for Everton. Um, you know, you know that they set up with uh, a player in behind Carver Lewin, and, and that's that's where Gordon predominantly plays. Um, but Gordon on the right today was just electric, absolutely electric, and um, I think he's probably given Eddie Howe a um, a good headache in the sense that now Harvey Barnes is fully fit. I think I think the team picks itself. You're right. I think Harvey Barnes will start on the left, and I think Gordon will play on the right, and then maybe now we're not going to miss Miggy as much. So. So yeah, I I I with those Pete to answer your question, I think I think at least five, possibly six. Yeah, I I, I would say so. Um, I, I, would, I, I would I would say at least at least four of those start, and and when you're getting into the realms of four or five players out of that list that would start for Newcastle United, oh, that's, when, that's when you know, that's when you know you've got a massive issue, and that's when you know that what you've done today in beating a team that have, were fourth in the table when you kicked off, that's when you know you've put in a fantastic, superb, tactical and a technical performance uh, to beat that team, regardless of whether you're home or away. Um, and, and, and it just goes to show that we did that. Um, that list of players there, any team in and around us, any team from Man City all the way down to Wolves or Chelsea, wherever they are in the league at the bottom of the top 10, any one of those teams losing that amount of players for that significant amount of time, I don't believe has as much success as what Newcastle United have done to still be in the position that we are now. Maybe Man City, because they've got a slightly bigger squad, but any other team, an Arsenal, a Liverpool, a Tottenham, a Villa, a Man United, maybe, um, but a West Ham, a, a Wolves, a Chelsea, they don't do what Newcastle United do with those missing players. That has to be down to Eddie Howe, still being able to churn out fantastic results. And these are not against, these are not against bad teams. We, we beat West Ham. We've beat Fulham away, who their home record is brilliant. Then we've gone and beat Tottenham. So we've not gone and beat Luton, Forest, and Burnley or Sheffield United, these are top teams that we've beat, and that makes a difference. Yeah, completely agree, mate. Completely agree. Definitely. Um, yeah, I want to just mention this as well. Uh, great to Twitter respect from both Newcastle and Spurs uh, uh, in honour of Joe Kinnear as well before the, the game. Um, just to note. Also, 
Now let's go to the table. Uh, so one sec, share the table. Bad. I'm making it a bit bigger so you can see it. Uh, maybe I'll switch screen actually. Give it a second because it'll, it'll look better on this side of the screen. I was going to say I've got it if you want me to put it up. Uh, not have it here now. Uh, boom. There we go. I can see it a bit better now. Uh, so we are in sixth spot after 32 games on 50 points, two wins in the, the bag in recent games. Uh, Man United, who drew today to all. Uh, Pete, I know uh, you were looking at that game where I didn't get to see it, but uh, they were looking to get a draw, I believe. They were, they were shocking today. Yeah. Um, but Man United being Man United, they, they just have a knack of picking up results when they probably don't deserve to. Um, I thought Bournemouth were the better team. I thought Bournemouth deserved to win. They missed countless good chances. I mean, like clear chances. Um, they, they should have been clear by half time. Um, but as as it always the case, if you don't take your chances, you end up being punished. And Bournemouth were punished because they were given a penalty against them where it, it really wasn't the penalty, but um, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, uh, look, it wasn't a win for Man United and it puts us ahead of them. Equal games played, a significantly better goal difference by 18. Um, ultimately, we're, we're in the driving seat, boys. Yeah. We are uh, with Palace up next. A bit of a break now to, to the next game, but uh, with Palace next. And yeah, now um, I know West Ham still have to play it this week, but um, um, yeah, and Chelsea have two games in hand at the moment. Uh, St. Stan didn't have to play as well. But yeah, it's it's, it's looking good. Uh, should we go to that question from Nobby now? Um, uh, let's bring it back up on screen again. And, and Chris, I, I know... You, this is when you 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 you're going to lead us off with because you you love this talk. Yeah. So Nobby says next three games are very winnable. Spurs' next three are tough. Uh, if we win the next three, we're in a good place to push for fifth. Outside chance of fifth getting Champions League. Lads, discuss. So what I'll do, mm. boys. Let me just um, let me just have a little look at the fixtures. So <laughs> our next game. Um, our next game, as we've just said, is Crystal Palace away on Wednesday the 24th, right? Now, Man United's next game is Sheffield United at home. So, you know, Man United should win that. Um, and but I, I, I'm fully confident, you know, that we, we, we could get three points. I think we said, didn't we, boys, that we, we'd fancy three points at uh, Selhurst Park. I think we said that, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. How many? Can you can you boys remember how many points we said and on the last show? How many points we get in the remainder? Yeah. And taking into account the fact that we said a point for Spurs, I think we said uh, sixteen or seventeen points. Mm, I think it was, wasn't it? I think it was, and that would put us so that would put us on sixty-seven, wouldn't it? But bearing in mind, we've got a two extra points. Obviously, we have to go and do the job and get the rest of the points. But we've got two extra points there from from that seventeen hole that we were talking about. Um, but we've got so Man United have got Sheffield United at home now. Nobby's question was whether or not we could maybe sneak fifth as well. So let's have a look at Tottenham's because Nobby says that Tottenham have got some really tough fixtures coming up. Now Tottenham aren't playing in the next game week, um, but Tottenham then have Arsenal at home, which I mean. Do we do we think do we think Arsenal could get the, could get the max points there? I won't I won't be surprised if it's a draw. I won't be surprised if it ends up a draw. I don't think e either team are going to want to lose that one because uh, losing Tottenham losing that at home it is catastrophic for their season. Yeah, Arsenal losing that away could effectively end their title run. With, yeah. with the run that Man City are, are, are on at the moment, obviously Liverpool are playing well. I, 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 I think it's it's a draw because neither will want to lose. It's a little bit like Man City Arsenal at the Etihad. Neither are going to want to lose that game. Will do you think though, Pete? Do you think Arsenal will be smelling blood, particularly watching watching our game today? Do you think Arsenal will be looking at it and going, do you know what, we have great chance of uh, going going to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and really, you know, sticking the knife in while they get the opportunity. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Arsenal would be bang up for that game. 
they'll yeah. be up for that game. And they they they're a team that, that's equipped to go there and really dismantle them. But I always go back to the point when it's a derby, anything's possible. Yeah, it kind of gets thrown out the window. You'll know, obviously, being Merseyside with Liverpool, Everton, like mm. it, any any anything is possible on those days because it's it's out of raw raw emotion and it's not always tactical with your head and and how you kind of play the, normally play the game. So it can throw up some surprises. But I would say, with, with what's at stake for both teams, look, Tottenham have to get Champions League football with the season that they've had. And with all the talk of Ange and the players that they've signed, they have to justify it by getting Champions League football. They've had no European football. They've literally had a week's rest every week to play. And they went out the cups early. Like, yeah. they have to. So, yeah, for me, I, I would say a draw and they'll shake hands and move on. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Daz? Um, I say Arsenal will win that. And they need to to keep the momentum on to to claim the the title. So I, I think Arsenal are going to take it take the all three points against Spurs. I mean, but, realistically, boys, Tottenham Tottenham are ten points ten points ahead of us at the minute. Um, and with there only being six games left, that's a possible eighteen points, isn't it? So Tottenham, you know, Tottenham, if they were to win all the games, eighteen points, we can't catch them. But um, what's interesting is. Tottenham have got <laughs> Tottenham have got Arsenal. Uh, so Tottenham play Arsenal at home. Then yeah. they've got to go away to Stamford Bridge. It's horrid. It's horrid. <laughs> which which isn't going to be go nice. Um, I, I chat with Toby about this earlier. I was still tell there. me more. Yeah, oh, oh. Daz, it gets better. Then they've got to go to Anfield. Okay, keep going. The only problem now is, boys, and there may be a game missing here because I, I can't see all of the games. Oh, I'm going to tell a lie. Maybe they're not. They've then got Burnley at home. Yeah. Which I think should be three points um, if they're not bruised and battered by that point. Then, they, then they've got Man City at home. Man City, Man okay. City are going yeah, to want to make sure that they win all their games. We've heard LB say it a lot on the, the 12th man with Potts that Man City need to win all of their remaining games to ensure that they win the title. So I think that's the mentality and the mindset that they're going to go into with. The only problem is Tottenham's last game of the season, as I say, I think I might be missing one, but Tottenham's last game of the season is Sheffield United away, by which point I think Sheffield United will be down. Yeah. Okay, so there's twelve. There's there's uh, four games there, 12 points that it could be dodgy for them. Um, yeah. Um, in, in that run, and then ourselves, we we'd have to win all our games as well. Which uh, even though we've got some players coming back, including Pope and a few more, um, I think we're just going to miss out, Chris. Yeah, we're just going to well, fall my... short uh, on on the fifth. Just to just to, I know we've been through this. I'm only going to go through it that quick, but just to just to um, you know look at look at Man United, uh, which I think is probably 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 our main rivals at the moment. I would say. Um, you've got Man. I'm, I'm not discounting West Ham, but obviously the show would probably go on for about three hours. I went through all the teams. Man United have got Sheffield United at home next, so I, I do think we need to win that Palace game in order to keep ourselves ahead of Man United. Um, Man United have then got Burnley at home, uh, which again you would expect Man United to get the maximum points there. Uh, obviously, we have our tie with Man United. And uh, when did we say that game was? You boys told me 15th what, what of May. 15th of May, right, okay. So it will probably be after this next one. So Man United then have Palace away, which won't be easy. Um, yes, of course, there it is, yeah. After Palace away, Man United have then got Arsenal at home. Then they've got ourselves at home. So that, that, that week could be the cruncher. That could be the crunching week because if Man United lose to Arsenal and then we beat them at Old Trafford... That could be six wrapped up, boys. I hate to uh, get you all excited, but it could well be the case. And then Man United have got Brighton away on the last game of the season. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I think, taking all that into account, I think we'll just fall short on fifth, uh, and but we'll get sixth, uh, and we'll finish ahead of Man United. 
which would be which would be a fantastic season, wouldn't it? Pete, where yeah. do you where do you think based on I know I'm obviously I'm testing testing your memory here, Pete, but off those fixtures that we've said, do you think fifth's out of the question? And do you think that we could get sixth? Yeah, I think we'd have to go on a monstrous run now to be in a position to finish fifth. Um, and we'd have to... Ex is it possible? Of course it is. Uh, Tottenham have got... Um, and I said I was talking to Toby about this again because I didn't realise how bad their next three or four games are. Like, they're really tough games and, and they're, they're going to be a wounded animal at the moment. So for me, like, is it possible? Of course. But is it likely? Probably not. Um, I think we could be a hell of a lot closer than the 10 points that separates us right now by, by the next three or four games. Um, I mm -hmm. think we could be very, very close to them, but I think we'll, we, they might just have too much though. They've got a couple of fixtures, Burnley and Sheffield United, that is just right for them to get enough points to, to finish fifth. But yeah. can we finish sixth? Definitely. But as I've said, like you look at that now, they were, they're all on, us, Man United, West Ham, we're all on 32. I know West Ham play tomorrow, but we're two points ahead of West Ham. Um, you know, we don't know how it, how it will fare. They've got Fulham um, at, at home. Fulham are a good side. Fulham may, may cause them problems. If, if we're still, if we're still like a point ahead of, West Ham going into that game against Crystal Palace, like we could completely clear daylight with them. Um, and I think they'd find it very hard with their fixtures to get back in. Uh, but I think, yeah, six is definitely within the conversation for sure. Um, and uh, the way we're playing right now, with potential of players coming back, Trippier, Miggy, Joe Linton, uh, Wilson, Willock will be back at some point. Like, they're big players to come back in that can only make us stronger. So we cannot not put ourselves in that in that race uh, for sixth. And it could be the season that we finally finish ahead of Man United. Yeah, absolutely. Bring I think it... On. I was going to say it's important to add as well. You'll notice that obviously we didn't we didn't include uh, Aston Villa in that conversation, and Aston Villa are on the same points as Tottenham. However, Aston Villa's fixtures look far more kinder than Arsenal's. I would say um, Aston Villa have got Arsenal away tomorrow, which isn't very kind. I appreciate, um, mm -hmm. but Aston Villa then have Bournemouth at home. They then have um, what is it? Uh, Chelsea at home. They've then got Brighton away. They've then got Liverpool at home. And then last game of the season, Aston Villa have got Palace away. So I, I, I think Aston Villa will do enough. And let's be honest, you know, Tottenham, Tottenham and Villa aren't going to have a complete drop off. One of the two will probably will probably do enough anyway to not be in that conversation. So I think Villa will be fine. I actually think, and I, I I did actually predict that Tottenham would finish above Aston Villa, but now looking at it, I think Aston Villa are going to finish fourth. Um, and we'll have to keep an eye on it. Is it the coefficient? Is that is that the correct phrase? Because obviously yeah. Liverpool are ruining that for England at the moment because Liverpool look like they're on the way out of the Europa League, much to the, the, the displeasure of Evel. Um, it looks like Liverpool are going to be knocked out at the quarterfinal stage, so they won't be going to Dublin. Um, and that quad is now looking... Well, it's looking more like a double now. If you, and I'm not even sure it'll be a double. It could even be a single. Um, but that's for another night, I'm sure. The, the, there's a few things on that because West Ham and Arsenal are in a difficult position as well. Yeah, Arsenal got to yeah. go to the Allianz Arena. And and the thing the thing about this at the at the moment the coefficient is we are we are equal to Italy. Okay, I think Germany are top. Italy a second, or it might be the other way around, actually. Well, we might be evens with Germany. I'm not sure how it is, but we're evens in joint second. We're officially third in that coefficient list. However, the problem is, is that West Ham could go out to German opposition. Liverpool could go out to Italian opposition in Atalanta. And Arsenal could be going out to German opposition in Bayern Munich. And because of that, you've got three English teams going out to opposition that are both fighting the coefficient. If that was to happen, they they go ahead of us. And so that place doesn't then become available, which then makes seventh place Conference League, sixth place Europa League. And so then it asks the question, 
can we finish in the, in the top seven, which we definitely can. But what it mm. does, it makes it a lot more difficult for us. And we have to create daylight with the likes of Brighton, Chelsea and Wolves just to ensure we get it. Can I, can I ask you boys a really odd question um, before we go to the comments? Um, do you think, that, is there any way that you think, and this is a, definitely a devil's advocate one, do you think in any way that it, it actually works out as a bit of an advantage if we don't get the fifth spot? And I'm not thinking about this season. I'm thinking about future seasons in the sense that if England were to get the fifth spot, so there was five Champions League places, yes, we would have five English clubs in Champions League. Brilliant. But it would then give the likes of Tottenham and Villa the edge on us this season and then going into future seasons. Whereas if it's only Tottenham or Villa who get the Champions League spot, and if there's only four in the in the Premier League going forward, like, for example, boys, I, I think next season we're going to have a fantastic <coughs> shout at top four. A fantastic show. Um, obviously, if there was top five, yes, there's more opportunity and yes, there's more chance of us getting it. But what I'm asking is, do you think in any way that it might actually work out better that there is only four places in the Champions League because it will stop either Tottenham or Villa potentially progressing and being able to kind of, you know, get themselves amongst that conversation in terms of challenging top four regularly? See what you're saying. Uh, so screw one of them over, and by us not getting the, the the fifth spot in the Champions League uh, mm. f- for an English team, um, mm. I haven't really thought about it that much, Chris. To tell you the truth, because we can't control any of this anyway. So uh, no, um, no. whatever no. happens, happens, I guess. But uh, it's just interesting. To see. Not that we can control Anthony. Anthony, anyway. oh, go on, Pete. Are you are you say we can? <laughs> I've thought about this a lot. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Think about this a lot. Uh, and and uh, um, the the reality is is that if if the fifth space for Champions League doesn't doesn't get opened up, I think whoever finishes in fifth for those two teams will be in a very difficult position. Um, Aston Villa, if they finish fifth, there is no doubt about it. There's lots being talked about with Aston Villa having to sell one of their top players to raise some funds or to sell a player of significance to, to raise some funds. Um, and the difficult the difficulty is, is that the, the, they probably don't want to get rid of anybody, whereas we, we do, because we're in a similar boat. But we, Wilson will go. Um, Miggy will go. Like people at Target will go. We've got players that we can get rid of that will raise some funds. Like they won't want to get sell anybody in their team. They they just won't, and so they're going to have to be forced to sell someone that they don't necessarily want to sell. People are talking about Isaac. I'll raise them. Ali Watkins that's been linked to elsewhere. We're in exactly the same boat. So they have to finish the Champions because they're going to need that money in order to, for them to kick on with their finances. It's the same with Tottenham. Tottenham can't go two seasons without finishing the Champions League because of the amount of money they've spent on their club and their stadium to generate them to be a regular Champions League team. And Mm. that will massively hamper Ange in the transfer market if they Mm. can't offer Champions League football. Um, And so, yeah, I think think it'll be massive if if that loses out. It obviously hampers us, because I'm I'm thinking about us, and I think, I just want European football. So if it offers out to eighth place, I'm taking it. But at the same time, my cogs are going like yours, Chris, and I'm going. You know what? If we'll go above is... eighth, we'll go above eighth. Yeah, if fifth's not available, if we can get into the top seven, will it be the worst thing for us? Yeah, no. But yeah. would it be bad for them? They've been built as being Champions League teams all season, and for them not to get it. That will be an absolute dampener for the fans, for everybody. You look at what the Tottenham fans are doing. Tottenham fans are in disarray. Expressions, for example, kicking off. I got Patrick, one of my one one of the, one of the good good content creators. <clears throat> he does not like Newcastle at the moment, and he's been getting shit from a lot of our Newcastle fans, people that watch this channel, and uh, he has been very very salty about the fact that we beat them today. Um, Tobes, someone asked a question about Tobes. To be fair. He's always very respectful with Newcastle. He's mm-hmm. gutted, absolutely gutted, and he wanted them to get revenge from last season. But I remind him, Daz, I reminded him, 
could we could we do what we did last season again? And he laughed it off. So I messaged him and I said, we ran it back. We ran it back from last season. Uh, Rewind, and, I think you said, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, well, he was came on very confident. I think he was he, he was expecting the, the victory today. I think we got talk, but yeah. no, he, he as you said, he, he was very respectful. Um, can I put it, put it another way then? Right, let's let's play out the scenario then of uh, Nobby's question that we do happen to to get into fifth spot. The Spurs crumble and we we excel and, and get into fifth spot, and then the coefficient. Lands us in the Europa League rather than the Champions League. How good and would that be? Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. I mean, I, I th- to be honest, I would, I would, um, yeah, I would be gutted. But then on the other hand, I would think, do you know what? I, I'd be immensely proud of the fact that we got fifth, regardless. Like yeah. we, we've got no right to finish fifth, and if we finish fifth, yeah. it's ridiculous. And you will see. Like Spurs fans go mad now. If we finished above Spurs uh, at the by the end of the season, there would just be a meltdown, an absolute meltdown. Because everybody knows, no one likes talking about it, but everybody knows how unlucky we've been with injuries this season. Obviously, with what's happened with Sandro Tonali, and they know that season on season, window on window, we're just going to strengthen, and they're going to go. Oh, Newcastle are going to get two or three more big players this summer. Newcastle are going to get two or three more players, and we're just going to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And this is why this is why Liverpool are getting a bit twitchy, and you know I I, I sense um, a lot of anger and venom from a lot of Liverpool fans because let's not forget we all know Jurgen Klopp's leaving at the end of the season. We all know that it's probably the worst kept secret that Mo Salah is probably going to be on his way out. Virgil Van Dijk is making noises saying, "Oh, you know, see what happens in the summer and all that." If they if they recruit the wrong manager, we've saw what happened with Sir Alex Ferguson at Man United. They recruit the wrong manager, they they could nose dive as well. And everyone keeps talking about uh, De Zerbi from Brighton. Like, what has happened to Brighton? Brighton have just mm. fell off a cliff. They're just awful. Like Pete, you showed me the goal today where they equalised against Burnley. I watched it. And I was just like, oh my god. And it, it, again, uh, Pete, it's just, sorry, just to go off on a tandem here. Did Evan Ferguson play today? No idea. I don't I have no idea. You, you know my thoughts. Uh, well back. Back. But um it probably was well bet, but I I'm just, I'm just having a look now at the lineup. So yeah. Ferguson. No, he didn't start. Did he come off the bench? No. Was he even on the bench? No. No, he's out with a knock, apparently. Okay. Yeah. But no. yeah, Brighton Brighton fell off a cliff. So it, it, all these all these people linking Deserby to the Liverpool job, Amarim, apparently he's come out, the Sport and Lisbon manager, and said there's been no talks. But then I also heard <laughs> today from my barber <laughs> that um, apparently Liverpool are going to announce their new manager next season. Uh, sorry, next week. Apparently the Liverpool manager is getting announced next week. Apparently it's what him. are you doing going to a barber, barber, Chris? Sorry? What barber you should be going to? Oh, my, bar- my barber. <laughs> my He's dead. He's dead. Good. We. He's a avid Liverpool fan. He was the one who knew. Um, do you remember I told you he knows. Um, oh, what was his name? The old director who worked with Rafa at Liverpool. Owen. Yes. Yes. Good mates with him. Um, yeah. So. Um, yeah, oh, Owen. Yeah. What's his name, Pete? I know you knew who I'm talking about. Owen. I can't think of his name. I can't think. think Owen I can't Brown. Think of Owen it. Brown. Is it? Um, it's it, oh, yeah, is he the one that's linked with the club? Yeah, yeah, uh, or, or, yeah, or was linked with the club? Uh, yeah, I think I know you're on about because yeah, I know yeah, you mentioned Owen Brown, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit, not too much. You're right, all right, boys. Yeah. We go, to, we go to the questions. Yeah, I'm, go, I'm going off, sorry, yeah, sorry, bye, <laughs> Where, uh... Pete. I'll let you tackle the mate because there's 56 in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll get this one what time is match the day on it? Yeah. <laughs> Good job I've got it recorded. Uh it says uh, uh yeah, Madison, he, he was really poor. Um I, I think he really shocked he, he struggled with the occasion um today. Uh, he got a lot of stick from the fans. Um and I think yeah, he, he really did struggle. And uh can just I, just sorry, go on. Can I just, sorry, Pete, can I just add? Do you think it's funny, like as a fan base, and I'm not criticizing anybody here, 
but it, it did make me laugh a bit. You know, the way everyone was calling them a greasy bastard. And it's like, we don't actually know whether we bid for them, do we? We're not actually 100% sure. And from from what I heard, not, not that I know anything particularly, but, you know, like rumours I heard and stuff like that, was that Eddie Al really wanted them, but, like, we never made a move for them. That, that's what I heard. I mean, obviously, some people say that, you know, apparently we did, but Tottenham offered more money, and that's why he went to Tottenham instead of Newcastle. But, you know, I I, I was under the impression there was a, 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 an opportunity for us to get Madison, and it was nearly a done deal, but it was the fact that we didn't push the button. We didn't actually go for them and go and get the deal done. But, I, I mean, not wages, one of us though. really know. I don't, they could offer more on wages. Yeah, a, a lot of it at the time was talked about wages uh, and all the rest of it. Um, there's, like I said, there's there's noises about Ashworth not wanting him and Eddie Howe wanting him, and, and this is what started the negative relationship that they had. There's a lot of things involved in that. But look, um, with Newcastle fans, what I've come to understand over the years is that there's always this opinion of players if they don't come to our club, it's because. Uh, they're, they're greedy. Um, mm. um, the obvious one's Michael Owen, and, and that was right. Um, well, that was right, yeah. yeah. Was. In that situation, there's uh, Andy Cole got it a little bit when he left and went to Man United. Um, he got the the greedy the greedy bastard chant. Who, who else has there been? I think Andy Carroll had it when he come back mm. with Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, the, the same. So we, we've done it. We've done it throughout the years with with, with various different players. I think. Um, Craig Bellamy got it as well uh, when he left. And there's loads of players that have had it over the years. Like, it is what it is. Like, whether fans really believe it or not, or whether they're just doing it to try and put the player off, who knows? Who knows? But look, knows? at the end of the day, he's a Tottenham player. Um, I think deep down, Madison will take it as a, as a compliment because he will know the reason why they're so animated about it is because Newcastle fans wanted him. They wanted him in the club. They know how good he is, and they're annoyed that he, that he didn't come. And they're, we're we're all glad that he just didn't have, he didn't have a good game, and it was well marshaled and well dealt with. Um, but he was very respectful to the Newcastle and the fans and the stadium uh, in his in his uh, into after the game. So like he he knows the score. Um, yeah. And like Pete Graves said, he tweeted out afterwards. Like he he said, but Madison wanted to come to the club. So it's not it's not about that. There's other factors that, that stop that from happening. But he yeah. wasn't very good at all. Um, uh, definitely. There's uh, oh, let me go to a, a question. Um, here's from Tomb Gamer. He always comes up with a great question. Um, yeah. If we had less players injured, do you think we would have played this formation and tactic? That's a good question. Um, so obviously we had, we we had the list of players that weren't available. Uh, we put it out earlier um, on the screen. If we'd have had less players injured, would we have set up the way we did against Tottenham today? What do you think, that? I think no. I think Eddie, Eddie would have played it uh, the way he normally plays it. Uh, there might be a uh, tactical kind of uh, element to it, but I think he would have gone more 4-3-3. He's, he's normal 4-3-3. Uh, but doing something different... Um, like if if we had a fully fit Hall, for example, he might, he might have played Hall from the start um, today. And um, so circumstances are uh, led to the way we, we did, and it worked out. It wasn't luck or anything. It was it was it was all planned out, uh, and he wasn't giving anything away um, for sure. So um, well played, Eddie Howe. You, if you you can't slag him off, if you you have to, if people slag him off when he doesn't work out, you have to to congratulate him when it does, and it definitely worked out today. Definitely, um, Chris. I'll come to you with another question. Um, this is from Scotty. Will Bruno's hothead rear itself now? He's not got the, the suspension <laughs> hanging over his head. It would be typical, wouldn't it? But like, what what do you think now? Do you think Bruno's going to carry on doing the job that he's been doing the last eleven games, or do you think there's going to be a difference in the way in which he applies himself? Do you know what? It's a fantastic question from Scotty. That absolutely fantastic question. I think I, I actually think it's probably got to the point now 
where he's actually quite proud of the fact that he's managed to handle himself so well and people keep praising him. Like, I, I think it was Ali McCoist on the commentary. He was like, you know, he said something along the lines of bloody hell, it's got to the point now where we're actually congratulating players and not getting a yellow card because uh, his co commentator was like, Bruno Guerra, she's done brilliant not to get a yellow card. And he was like, is this what it's come to? Um, but he has done fantastically well, very, very disciplined. And I think, I think. It, as much as ourselves and probably Eddie Howe were a bit worried that we might lose a little bit of Bruno, I think it's kind of helped him mature. And I think it's helped it's helped him kind of, you know, take a step back and go, do you know what? I can be a bit more level-headed here. And he's thinking of the team as a whole. And that's not to say that he wasn't previously. It just means that he's shown his maturity and he's shown his responsibility as such a big player at the club. Um, I actually think he'll try and continue for the rest of the season. I could be wrong. He could go two-footed into into uh, Will Hughes at the Crystal Palace. Who knows? <laughs> um, I could be completely wrong. But I, I think I think Bruno will try and keep this going now just to kind of prove to himself and everybody else I can still be a fantastic player and I can still do bits and also keep myself you know, out of uh, the referee's booth. No, so fair play, fair play. Uh, a few comments in the chat for various different things. Um, nice to hear from a Spurs fan. They've got a Spurs fan here. Fair play on the win, fully deserved. I reckon you boys can maybe get Champions League now. Um, if it um, if it doesn't uh, go to the top five, Spurs will finish sixth or below. Now I think we are not great. Respect for you coming on, putting no. uh, your opinion for sure. And, Good um, Good man. Yeah, interesting. Uh, we, we've we've touched on that. Whether we think. Uh, it can potentially happen. Some people do, some people don't. Let, let's wait and see. Um, uh, another comment here. Massive thanks for your Dave. membership, Dave. Great Hi, to see Dave. you early. Roll on Europe. Great performance. Anderson class. Um, have to agree with that. That is for sure. Some other comments. Leisha's put, at this point, this was way earlier on in the show, um, oh. only 79 likes. I think there are significantly more than that now, but there's way more um, likes that we could have so if you haven't clicked that like um if you're new to the channel and are watching it and not in the in the chat subscribe to us get involved in the chat put your questions in put your comment in and uh we'll get it up on the screen um but we won four likes yeah. 100 for each goal to, uh today let's go let's go but more importantly thank you for tuning in uh, to loaded mag nufc um some other other comments here um and I'll just bring this up because this is something I wanted to talk about. Is uh, Michael put, did Dubravka even make a save? And the reason why I say that is because, um, if you can see on the screen now, we are second in the clean sheet Premier League wow. um, listing. Uh, for the season? Uh, yeah, for the season. Also on four. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Um, this season. Uh, yeah, this season. Um Newcastle United are on ten. We were we were joint third with with Everton and uh, well joint third with a number of those teams as you can see. But with that clean sheet today, it put us second, which is crazy to think about. But the amount of goals we've conceded since the end of November, since Nick Pope's been injured, we still we were still in that conversation with clean sheets. Which may, again, we don't want to keep doing it. But it just makes you think if we had a Pope and he wasn't injured, how far we would have gone and how many more clean sheets would have had. Um, so your question that, here, Pete, is is do you think we can catch Arsenal? Is that what you're going to ask us? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, with the games coming up, there, there's a possibility. Uh, I don't think we will. But but look, just to be in second for clean sheets just shows that we we've, we've had games where we where we you know where we can be really really hard to break down and hard to beat. Um, and that is for sure. A couple of other just comments mentioned. Um, 17 goals in 24 Premier League games for Alexander Isak. Absolutely outstanding. With regards to the clean sheets, Williams put, um, we'll take those clean sheets every time. I think he's he's saying that in the goosebumps uh, voice yes. uh, at the beginning, which is uh, every time. Uh, there we go. Um, yes, Nobby, Bournemouth should have won that um, against Man United. That is for sure. And it comes back to me. To you, Daz, the question is this. Do you think if Werner had scored that chance in the first five minutes, the game would have been different? If Werner was still there, he still wouldn't have scored. He was that bad. Uh, uh, yeah, and what, do, do they 
do they get them on loan or something or do they, do they have the option to buy them for 15 million or something like yeah. that uh, yeah, yeah. I'd let them go I'd let them send them back I wouldn't be if I was Spurs I wouldn't be uh, keep, keeping them at all he's, he's really it's, England does not suit him uh, first Chelsea and now it's Spurs it's not, not really working out um, I think it would have taken them off sooner uh, but yeah uh, so do you, it, but yeah if they scored the first five minutes that shit where um uh, Brendan Johnson crossed the ball in and he should have gone led with his head rather than his foot. Um, it could have led down the, the path to a draw, yes. Um, because uh, yeah, the Spurs would have had their tails up then. Um, I'm sure that thing that last season's uh, game against us would have played on, on, on the minds as well. I know Ange tried to, and he wasn't there, he obviously he wasn't the manager at the time, but he put it, put it didn't want to talk about it so much. But uh, I'm sure it played a, played a part as well in, in the kind of. The um, the mind games um, going into that game, but it could it could have altered the course of the game, yeah. Between the definitely, uh, I agree. Um, Chris, this one's for you. Um, do your blue nose mates still think forty million was a waste of money? I think you've touched on this before, for Anthony Gordon. If they do, they don't know football. What are they currently saying, mate? What are they currently do, saying? Do you know what? Do you know what it? Do you know what it is, right? And this is this is the this is what always makes me smile, makes me laugh because. I know, I know my blue and red mates, they know the fussy, they do, but they just like to pretend, not pretend that they don't, but they like to pretend that, like, they're right, do you know what I mean, and that I'm deluded. I get called deluded quite a lot, um, and I've been singing Anthony Gordon's praises so much this season, as I have with Alexander Isak, and I, I got I got laughed out of our group chat the other day when I when I had the audacity to suggest that uh, Isak was the second best striker in the in the uh, in the league. Not even the best striker. I said the second best striker, but apparently Ivan Tony Watkins are both better than Isak. Anyway. Fast forward two or three weeks, and I just keep pumping the Isaac stuff. I just keep doing it. But yeah, they, they, I think they're all feeling they're all feeling a bit battered and bruised at the moment, particularly after that Europa League result the other night. I think they were all expecting to do what Liverpool do and just turn up and you know get, get a nice little two or three nil home win. Um, and then obviously they didn't. And I think as well, both both are twitching a bit because obviously the derby's coming up. Um, the the derby at Goodison Park is coming up, and obviously it means a lot to Everton, and it could end up meaning a lot to Liverpool. But as you can imagine, the Blues want to win because obviously they need the points to stay in the league. But what they'd love even more is to stop that title charge for Liverpool. So if Everton managed to even get a draw or God forbid beat Liverpool, like we just will never hear the end. <laughs> the bit never at the end of it, you know. Where I think that I think they're all just getting a little bit agitated. And I've said this before, before, boys. The reason they're getting so agitated is because they know we're coming. They know we're coming, and they don't like it. They know we're coming, and they know that we're just going to get better and better and better and better. And they can see it before their eyes. They don't like it. I was celebrating Joe Linton getting a new contract. Oh, he's shit anyway. He's crap. And I was like, sorry, what? So. They do, yeah, exactly, exactly, Pete. Exactly. They're, they, they're, they're just panicking. They're, just panicking. they're even resorting to trying to quit. They're even resorting to quitting your broadband, Chris. They're that panicked at this stage. <laughs> oh, did it go? Oh, sorry, I didn't even notice. I was no, no, we heard you. We heard you. Did you hear me? Oh, that's good. Yeah, they're just, they're just, they're, they're all panicking. All of them are panicking because Everton are nowhere near us now, and Liverpool. I mean, I'll, I'll, be honest, boys. I am worried, and I'd say this in jest, but I'm not jesting. I'm worried for Liverpool next season. I'm worried for them. Everyone, next time well, we get a lot on peace, we'll have to speak about it. I'm worried for them. I think there's, I think there's big problems coming up next season. And if Klopp ends up walking out that door and he's got, sorry, big yeah. one. No, I was going to say, you think you, know, you think we're getting anything out of Errol? He ain't admitted anything, <laughs> nothing at all. He's going to tell you everything. Everything smells brand new, fresh roses. That's what he's going to tell you. Whereas inside, there is a different feeling there because oh. they are worried a hundred and ten percent. And look, I, I'm not worried. I don't think you're worried, Chris. Daz, I don't think you're worried over here. Um, well, hey, bring it. I'm I'm here for it. I'm here. I'm I'm here for Mate, another I, I, above Liverpool next season. When when Newcastle, you know, like uh, you know, a few months ago, 
when they, you know, when when we had all these injuries and when we were really struggling and you know we were losing games and we weren't you know getting as high up the table as what we should have been and obviously Tonali was out and stuff like that. All my mates kept going, oh, you must be gutted. Oh, you must be devastated. Oh, you must be worried. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not worried. Because this bad run of form that we've had, these disappointing set of results that we've had, there's a reason for it. So next season when we come back and we don't have this ridiculous injury list, you should be worried. Because we're, uh, we're, we're sitting six in the table and we've had half a squad for the whole season. That's half a squad. And we're only going to go and get two or three even better players to add to the squad. And we're going to have Joe Linton and Tonali back. But apparently I'm deleting. Chris, Chris, is that a spliff you're rolling there as, as well as your vape? No, what sorry. You... What it is, what it is. No, sorry. Yeah, it does look like that, doesn't it? What it is, is me vape's leaking. So I'm cleaning it with tissue and drying it. That's what I'm doing. Sorry. No, I'm not going to split, I promise. Uh, next okay. question. Question for you, and it's a super chat. So thank you very much, Nobby. Nobby. All that super oh, chat. Nobby, good man. Guys, are you Cheers, Nobby. Uh, how are you testing since shaving with Manscaped? <laughs> oh, well, uh, what's that word? Wrinkled berries. Wrinkled berries is the word. So, yes, uh, <laughs> I had to sit on one of uh, Russ's radiators to, to sort myself out there, Nobby. Is that, is that the answer you're looking for? <laughs> so, I'm just going to run through some comments just because, and I've got, I'll come back to you with a question, Chris, really quickly. Yeah, um, Spurs Kings uh, TV says, I saw that come in. Uh, respect for you joining the chat. Um, also puts here, this Spurs, this Spurs all season since January, we've been awful. Teams just adjusted tactics. Uh, to plays and it works because Ange only plays one way. Anyhow, um, big well done from me, and that's from a Spurs fan. So respect to that. And a few people have said that people are starting to figure out Ange. And although he won those managers in the month and everyone was bigging him up, yeah. he needed time to adjust to English football. Um, yeah. It's always good in the honeymoon period for everybody, but it's whether you can still do it six months into the season. Can you still do the business? Our manager's proving he can. And just having this difficult moment. Can he get out of it? I'm sure he will. Um, other comments as well. Let me just fly through. Um, oh, hold on a second. And another one from Anne. I'll, I'll be, give a shout out. Um, how many... Uh, oh, sorry. How are you all two fans? Hit the like. Um, it's so easy to do. How are you all the two fans? Um, you can do it. Cheers, Anne. Thank you, Anne, for that. Thank you, Anne. Um, for that that is for sure some other comments as well um now oh, come on jake don't do this how many teams are gonna be coming in for easy it, nah, it's, are we having are we, shot. boys are we having this no. do you know what Sorry, jake. i think i think i'll be well I'll, be, I'll, I'll answer this quite easily for jake i think only two or three clubs could afford these are hmm. Um, one of them is Real Madrid, who will be going for Mbappe, so it won't be them. Um, I think PSG might be interested in the Isaac, but whether or not he would be tempted to go and play in a Farmers League, not so sure. And then the other club is probably, well, Man City don't need them, do they? So it wouldn't be them. Um, the other club is Arsenal, but again, as we said before, I don't think Arsenal can afford them. So I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually quite content that Isaac's going nowhere because I don't think anyone could afford them. I really don't. Because the money that we'd want for them, I don't think other clubs could afford it. Yeah, definitely. No, I agree. I agree. Um, got a comment here, question here. Daz, I'll come to you with this. Um, a player that we've not really talked about uh, tonight, but question, what did you think of Jacob Murphy after his horror show in the last game? Um, yeah. yeah so what did you make of it, his performance today? No, he, he was asked to play in, in the position he's, he's not, not used to playing in, um, and in, in a right wing back uh, kind of a role today. Yeah, he, he wasn't great the other night, uh, but he, he did really well. He was he was um, tiring around the 70 minute mark as well, but it just shows it the, the amount of effort he put in. Uh, he, he wasn't in my top five, top six of, of standout stars today, but no, he put in a really, really good performance and uh, fair play to him. Um, no, no problem seeing him back in there again. I was happy to see Tino come on at the same time. So uh, I'd, I'd like Tino to start there uh, in the next game, even if it is trips that's back. I, I'd, I'd rather Tino on on that right, right back, right wing kind of uh, 
right uh, wing back kind of a role. But uh, no, uh, Murphy put in a, a decent performance. I'm going to stick with you, Daz, for this one. Um, another yeah. question related to that right back berth. Question: This may seem a bit weird. Uh, uh, may seem a weird one and a brave one. Um, I could get shit. Have we missed Trippier? No, no, but I don't think. I think that, that's 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 fair enough. We we wouldn't have if Tino didn't get injured as well. Um, but sure, sorry, uh, Kraft put in a performance when he was playing right right back uh, for us uh, too. Uh, no, I think I think Trips is going to be going to be more of a, a, a kind of road in a rotation kind of role, and uh, look with his deliveries as well. Gordon did really well. Someone had in the comments here. Gordon did really well in the corners, uh, and, and Spurs are a shit at corners. So um, it's I suppose it's it's the free kicks if we need someone in free kicks. But hopefully we'll have two Nally back in, in next season, and he, he can take a free kick as well. So. He's going to be more a bit part player trips, I think, next season. He's, he's got Tino has to be has to be uh, near 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 the starting line. If not if not on, in right back position, in the left back position, uh, I want to see trips. Uh, sorry, Tino starting, even if it means ahead of Trippier. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Marco says uh, uh, Anderson played the journey into role to perfection. He absolutely yeah. did. Uh, are you yeah. boys in agreement with this? I come with you with this, Chris. Soon Gamer says, sell Wilson, Willock, Miggy, Murphy and Target in the summer. Are you going for that one? Yeah, I, I starred that one, actually. I think um, I think Toon Gamer's not far off the mark there. The only one that I'd maybe consider keeping, um, but again, it depends whether the money gets put on the table. The only one I consider keeping out of those would be Murphy. Um, but if somebody put upwards of 10 million on the table, would probably cash in. Um, but I think Murphy's shown... Not not just the whole Newcastle fan idea, but also the fact that he's such a good utility player, as he's shown before. You, you can slot in it right back when you know you were talking before, Pete, about when we had the ball. He'd slot in it as a right back. He then slots it in as a right wing back. He can play right wing, and he always gives one hundred and ten percent. But if an up a bit of upwards of ten million came in, I think he would would go but on the other hand i think we'd be more than happy to keep him as well he would be the one that i would keep weirdly out of all of those he would be the one that i'd i'd keep purely taking into account those things because i think the others would bring in a fair bit of money particularly um willick and miggy um i think they bring in really decent money so i think i'd be i'd be willing to let those go um but yeah yeah, but I don't think he's far off the mark there suggesting those players. You could argue you could add Sean Longstaff to that list as well. But again, it depends whether the money gets put on the table. Yeah, definitely. Um, Dad, I'll come with you with something else. Um, where is it? Where is it? There was a question I just had a second ago. Um, interesting one from Dave. How much is Gordon worth now? A bargain at 45 million, which is done it before, but <laughs> Is there a particular price you would put on his head? Not that we're selling him because we're not, but if there was a value on his head, what would it be, Dad? Yeah, I'm not selling him, definitely not selling him. Um, I'm saying 90 to 95 million. That's uh, like, like, it wouldn't even consider, like, even 80 million, I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider it now either. Like, uh, and like, his age and how he's he now is an England international and he's building on this as well. If he goes ahead and has this similar kind of season as he has this season, definitely, definitely in those kind of figures. But uh, a bargain at 45 million, yes. And at the time, I remember when Chelsea were looking at him about six months prior to us getting him, there were there was 60 million was quoted about them. Did seem a bit steep at that, but yeah, uh, he's he's definitely been worth it. Just to add into what Daz has said there as well, and again, I've got to hold my hand up, Pete. I know you held your hand up uh, earlier on in the show. Um, we saw, didn't we, on the Amazon documentary that the owners and Eddie Howe and everybody were all in agreement over Anthony Gordon. And I think the yeah. quote that was used was, he will end up being one of our, if not our best player. And at the time, I thought, Jesus, that's some statement. that I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. I... I would struggle. I would struggle to argue with that now. Um, obviously, you've got your Bruno and your Isaac and stuff like that. But Anthony Gordon is right up there. When Anthony Gordon's not on the pitch, we all go, "Oh, geez, oh, we're going to miss Gordon today." 
when we signed him at the back end of the previous season, and you know he came he came in in the January, didn't he? And he looked raw. He looked like he had potential, but I didn't think I didn't think he would progress like he has done so quickly. I wasn't expecting this because right now Anthony Gordon, we've already said it. Anthony Gordon is one of, if not the best winger in the Premier League in form at the moment. I didn't think he'd reach that. Certainly not at this point. Um, but he's outshining most most players in the league now, and um, he's he's so invaluable to us, and he showed that again today. Yeah. Is like we to... talked about. Go on, that, sorry. So, sorry, I'm going to link it back to something you had said, Pete, because in, in our luxury tax show, we talked about right wingers. We talk about Rafinha, and look what Rafinha did uh, against uh, PSG uh, in in the Champions League, and like, how much would you have to pay for him now as well? No, uh, so we're talking yeah, about the same kind of figures. And and and, and he's, Anthony Gordon has got one of his highest ratings uh, for his performance today. It was um, on on most uh, uh, stat stat kind of uh, platforms. He, he's got a nine point four nine point five for his performance. He in most cases he's got given man of the match. So uh, for right. playing right wing, like and, and producing that type of performance, it has to be respected a hundred ten percent. And and like you said, it then beg, begs the question. Where do we sign in the summer? We were talking about we don't need another left winger. Do we do we go with Gordon and, and Murphy and then maybe go Barnes and another left winger? Or do we go right or do KK? We... <laughs> well, that conversation that like, rears its head again. Um and, and you just don't know because that performance today does make you kind of sit back and go, mm, okay, what 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 are we actually gonna be looking at? In the summer, we like it, it just gets us thinking in, in a different way. But, um, Adam, massively respectful. Uh, you know what we've said, Pete? Oh, one. oh, sorry, Pete. I was just going to say, do you know what we've said? And we've said it time and time again about the transfer policy. Quite often, there will be positions that are highlighted and they go, Oh, you know, we need a center back or we need a defensive mid or whatever. But I do believe that they do have a list of players where if they become available regardless of what position they play in, and they go, we want that player. If a left winger comes up that we really, really, really want, I think you're right. I think I think they start looking to shuffle the squad bounds and go, well, you know what? He's the one that we want. Let's go and get him. Okay, Anthony Gordon is now our right wing option. So then we've got Barnes, the new left winger, and then we've got Murphy and we've got Gordon on the right. Potentially mm. somebody else as well, Minter, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. KK, Rafa Leal. Happy with either. Uh, um, <laughs> Bag NUFC, uh, you're bringing us home to Match of the Day tonight. Yeah, we brought you a Match of the Day style theme with our with our reaction uh, and, and analysis of uh, of the game today. That's for sure. And then you you can watch the second rate Match of the Day afterwards. Uh, but no, <laughs> a big up and massive massive thanks for your so support as well. I'm only going to bring a couple of more things up and then we'll we'll, we'll wrap up at this point um just a light-hearted one here for chris um any a1 products i could use with manscape products asking for a friend oh there's plenty available mike don't you worry about that mate just make sure you slap it on your balls and get that shave out and you'll be fine there you there go. go there it is now it is. now mike have, have you have you uh considered the uh crop preserver and the crop soother <laughs> that is the question mike <laughs> they will sort you out don't you worry about that and then once your balls are nice and soft, you've got a lovely um what are they called? Premium, premium version of um boxes there. So they will they will uh, help protect those uh polished balls. There they are, bottom left. There you go. There you go. Oh, there you go. Look at this, it's loaded after dark. <laughs> Move on with the questions, Pete. <laughs> Literally. Um, I, I mentioned this earlier on, uh, and Frederick has, has put, this win is 100% Eddie Howe. Um, yeah. does, should Eddie Howe get any respect for this, boys? Uh, I kind of asked uh, ask this to both of you, really. What, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah. No, uh, Eddie Howe, you have to have, take your, dip your hat towards Eddie Howe. Um, he, he, he saw the gap, uh, uh, worked out a system to, to, to tackle Spurs and uh, to counteract anything that they can throw at, at us. And it worked out today. So uh, fair play to Eddie Hill. He deserves his victory. Yeah. Yeah. No, I completely agree. Completely agree. Yeah, spot on. Um, Jake mentioned earlier on the show, hilarious Spurs fans want Ange out now. And um, that was that was always... <laughs> 
Always going to be the case. <laughs> Um, uh, Marcus mentioned about the link to the preview that, that I did with the Premier League. Um, the, we'll, we'll, loaded, we'll put it out on socials at some point yeah. when, we, when we get it. They're, they're um, obviously live, so they'll like edit it and, and sort it out from there. So I'll get into that. Um, on, on away days, I didn't mention Van der Ven about Isaac um, sort of committing Van der Ven. It was actually Romero, but. This is a conversation now with Tobes. Is actually, I did mention on away days that I thought Isaac would lean on Romero as the weaker of the two because he could get the winning off. And actually, he spent a lot of his time on Romero's side and it created Van der Ven going over because I think Van der Ven was told to man mark um, e, um, Isaac to match him for his pace. Um, and that pulled Van der Ven out. How'd that work out? And and pulled him out of positions and pulled him literally onto the floor, uh, which is what you can see there that Daz has just put up. But um, yeah, it, it, it certainly worked. And he's like a, a smart guy; he knows his stuff. Um, that is for sure. Um, Eddie had masterclass for tactics, but the whole team got up for the game uh, and bullied Spurs off the park. You're absolutely right, Neil. Um, uh, it, look, I'm going to come on to the last few now. So Chris Potts says, "Get these people to 10k." Uh, for fuck's sake, they deserve it. And a massive thanks to you. And we are so close. Um, one of the dreams of ours as a channel, right from the beginning, um, we are now so close to that. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do uh, and get us ever closer to that 10K. It would be amazing, um, uh, amazing achievement for us um, to get there. And Yeah. Uh, thank you for all your support. And thank you for watching, of course. Um, just a, another quick comment. Um uh, Jose Perez is the last pledge score. A hat trick for his back in 1819. Um, how have Isaac not had a hat trick? <laughs> he's getting very close, but look, as long as he's putting it in the net, it, it doesn't really. Uh, we nearly saw it in West Ham as well. Uh, the, the game against us, we were nearly yeah. there for that one. Yeah. Jesus. He, could have, he could have had two hat tricks today. Yeah, he could have. Of course. Of course. We'll take it. Still take it 4 0. Oh, yeah. We are nearly there. Um, and, and then... Oh, we're getting towards the end now. So, uh, what, what, what I wanted to do is finish on a really kind of nice note uh, with one of the comments in the chat. Um, so let, let's finish on that one. So basically, uh, Jordy Team for Life puts, apart from the result and the performance, real highlight was seeing uh, the joy on the deaf children's faces and Dan Byrne giving them the celebration that was really, really heartwarming. And uh, look, Newcastle have uh, broken barriers um, th this weekend with the, the technology of the RNID and what they did. And I, I, I dropped this picture on just because I thought it was absolutely amazing. And, and that moment there, so many people on socials have captured it. That moment there of, of uh, I believe it's a parent and, and the child was kind of sharing the moment in which the goal had gone in. Um, I think that might have been the first goal. Um, it, it's just amazing. And of course, the, the Dan Byrne um, uh, moment where he, he sort of celebrates and, and signals towards the RNID fans uh, and the children in the in the stands and the children doing the same back almost at the same time. It's, a, it's amazing. Uh, absolutely amazing. Yeah. They taught him a, a sign lang language. Uh, I think uh, uh, Dan Byrne and Trips uh, went and, and visited them, and it was just it was just a nice touch, wasn't it? It was just uh, perfect to, to to round it all off. And a great day for a great day for Newcastle. Definitely, definitely. Hey, summer. <laughs> hey, good stuff. Good stuff. Hope you well. You okay? Yeah, you good. You you, you buzzing Newcastle United win today? You please we won today. You please we won today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what? <laughs> what, I needed to hear. what I needed to hear. Uh, boys, that's the end of the questions. Nice one, Pete. Nice one. <laughs> Did you get, just get a slap there, Chris? I just got a whack on the edge, yeah. <laughs> she gets that from her mum. Um, <laughs> but, uh, let's let's uh, round off uh, the show. Uh, thanks to everyone for watching. Make sure you hit that like button on the way out. Uh, don't forget about if you are considering the um, the Manscaped products to use the code Loaded Twenty. That will sort you out and you get your free shipping and twenty percent discount. We will be back during the week. Uh, 
probably, I'm going to say, I mean, unless something else happens to me, then probably Tuesday. And um, so keep your eyes peeled for that because there's a lot of games going on as well. So we want to uh, get to you as quick as we can. That's it. Um, Chris, I'm going to leave you with the choice. Do you want to go for the Isaac with the misspelling uh, tune or do you want to go with the Eddie Howe? It's a tough decision. It's a very, with? very, very tough decision. Um, but just because I love the tune, I've, I've got to go with the Isaac. But just before we do. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Enjoy match of the day. See you soon.